Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling podcast. This is not, not that. that. <laughs> what it is, is, is a big, dirty, sweaty, beefy deep dive of God of War. Oh, ho, ho, ho. This is our fourth deep dive in video games. First, we have The Last of Us 2. Which I'm so immensely proud of. And then we visited Lady Domitresk in Resident Evil 8 Village. <laughs> I can't do it. You're doing it from now on. <laughs> For number three, we jettisoned to planet ZDR with Metroid Dread. Bloop, 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 bloop. And now we prepare for Ragnarok with God of War. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These deep dives are all Nogger U exclusive videos. Nogger U is our Patreon. But we're sharing them publicly to help you get through this crappy time in the world as we've been doing since the start of lockdown. Hmm. Since March 2020, we've published over 100 videos. Amazing. Playlists with all of these videos are in the description box. Bing. Oh, you can see by the length that this is a big whopper girthy deep dive because we've got a retrospective story, gameplay, acting, writing, kayfabe thoughts, tips for first time players, improvements, PC port, and even a comic book if you eat all your vegetables. Oh. Hmm, so let's get to it! Yes, God of War is a 2018 action-adventure game from Santa Monica Studios. It is a triple-A cinematic blockbuster about the god-killer Kratos, simply titled God of War, even though it's the fifth main entry and eighth overall in the series. It is steeped in Greek mythology, Spartans, Zeus, Pantheon, that kind of thing. But in a stunning move, the new game takes place in Norse mythology, Thor, Odin, Bifrost, that kind of stuff, giving the series a familiar yet entirely fresh set of gods and flavorings. A PS4 exclusive game, it got a HD texture pack for the PS5 in 2020 and a PC release in January 2022. Holy shit! God of War on a non-Sony platform, first time in history. But we'll talk about that in the second half of the review. But first, Steve, God of War retrospective. Oh yeah. Uh, mm. Oh, mm. we're just turning into once there was this god who killed his man and his dad <laughs> and his uncle and his friends. <laughs> <laughs> god of war franchise retrospective god of war santa monica studio is absolutely smashing it since 2005 a series known for its hack and slash gameplay combo based bloody combat steeped in lore and mythology the impressive scale of its boss battles and its perennially peeved protagonist until the pc port in january 2022 god of war was a playstation exclusive and a huge huge reason to buy their console and still is Ares! Destroy my enemies, and my life is yours. Two thousand five's God of War one for the PS two. Kratos is a badass Spartan warrior, but in a moment of defeat, pledges his soul to Ares in return for winning a battle. Ares says, "Yeah, sure," but he's a bollocks and tricks Kratos into slaughtering his wife and daughter. Goddess Athena helps Kratos out, see they have similar goals, she hates Ares, so he treks to find an object that will give him his revenge, Pandora's box. Yeah. What do you think? So I didn't play this game on PS2 when it came out. I got the PS2 disc and I put it in the PS3, so it was just before they brought out the hasty remasters. Mm. And even though it was a generation old, this game still wowed me at the time. It was so cool, it was so fresh, it was so different. I just also want to point out that after Ares tricks Kratos into killing his wife and child, just so that he won't ever forget it, he gets covered in their ashes for the rest of time. So mm. that's why he's white. What a dick. <laughs> <laughs> his skin white with the ash of his dead family. The ghost of Sparta had been born. I love this game. I love how it feels. Like I love how it's so fast. 
But if you want to take the time to learn that there is depth to the combat and there's like juggling, if you're good at this game, you can lift an enemy up into the air, jump up with them and hit them 40 times before they touch the ground, you know? Yeah, love it. I think it was a genuine blockbuster game that was so ahead of its time. Some of the boss fights and the scale and things like that. Fucking incredible. Hmm. Uh, Side note, Athena's also a bollocks because she won't rid Kratos of his nightmares of killing his family, something she's very fond of. In the end, Kratos kills Ares and becomes the new god of war. Yeah. I played this game on hard because I was told that the game is quite easy. It was fine. And then I got to Ares and oh my god, I must have died to him a hundred times. I couldn't beat him. I dropped it down to normal. I couldn't beat him. I had to pussy out and drop it down to easy to beat Just for the boss. To just beat this game. And I beat the rest of the game on hard. Also, I love how for the final boss fight, the camera pans out and turns and you're basically having a 2D one-on-one beat him up for the final boss. Very cool. By defeating Ares... Kratos, the once mortal warrior, became the new god of war. However, Kratos soon found himself alone on Olympus, shunned by his fellow gods. 2007's God of War 2 for the PS2. Zeus, the god of gods, betrays Kratos, turning him mortal and sends him to hell. Kratos travels the underworld, gets help from the titan Gaia to find the sisters of fate who can do some time travel bollocks to stop him from being murderized. It pretty much does everything that you would want the sequel to do. Looks better, plays better, it's bigger, it's longer, it's bloodier, better bosses, more bosses. This is a 10. Wow. I think I'd argue it's probably the best of the original trilogy. When I think of God of War 3, there are parts from this game that I think are in God of War 3 because this game just looked so fucking good. Uh, Do you have any favourite bits? Some of the more memorable bits are the bosses. So God of War games usually open up with a big boss Mm. fight. In the first game, you fight... The big boss fight. The big boss. In the original, you fight the Hydra on a ship. Uh, which at the time was mm-hmm. mind blowing, and then the second one just kind of ups the ante, and you fight the Colossus of Rhodes, Nathan Jones, <laughs> and then of course your your like dad kind of heel turns on you and sets you on your plot to kind of kill him. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, you f- find out he's your dad, mm-hmm. also that you're the son of Zeus, so you're a demigod. Oh yeah, it's so good. I remember one of the boss fights. It's like this big fat blue lady blob and just massive tits just flopping all <laughs> over the place. Not Hilarious. Spicy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this the one where you get to bang Athena? Uh, that can't be Athena. Who do you bang? I bang. think you bang Athena in the third game. Ah, okay, okay. So no, not Athena. You um, Aphrodite. Ah, very good. Yeah, yes, very yeah. Good. Oh, Jay's. You give her a good time. <laughs> Yeah, the god of war. (laughs) 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 Athena implores Kratos to not kill Zeus and sacrifices herself. She drops a bomb that not only that Zeus is Olympus, so if you kill him, Olympus dies, but he is also Kratos' dad, who is afraid you'd kill him as their family have a history of patricide. Sure, Zeus, he killed his dad, Cronus! (laughs) <laughs> no! Hey, needs more cronus. Kratos goes back to the past to play some shitty games that suck ass, <laughs> recruits the Titans, and rides to battle, heralding the destruction of Olympus. Yeah. I love the way there are so many overarching themes that come from this game that play into the God of War that we're going to talk about here. Like sons killing their fathers. So obviously, Kratos kills his dad. Zeus killed his dad. Zeus's dad kills his dad. His name is like. Or anus or something? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit owey, a bit anus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert, but there's things with Balder and things with Kratos' son. And it's all cycles and it's about trying to break them. So yeah, it's a, you know, it's a theme that's gone a while. Mm. My vengeance ends now. 2010's God of War 3 for the PS3 continues on from the last Kratos offs Poseidon and gets to Zeus who jobs him out and sends him packing back to the underworld. Death cannot hold those of purpose, Kratos. Athena. Kratos is guided by Athena's spirit to search for Pandora he, he couldn't jimmy open her box uh, to defeat Zeus and the Olympic gods and finally get his revenge. Love this game. I do think God of War 2 is the better game, 
But when I think about the series, I mostly think about this game because it's a boss rush. The game opens up and you kill the god of the seas and then you go to hell and you kill Hades and then you chase down Hermes and you chop off his legs and take his boots. Uh, the guy from Futurama, yeah. <laughs> and then obviously then there's the big final boss battle against Zeus, which is epic. A three-parter boss fight begins with a like a 2D side-on-side uh, fighting game. Then you go up to the top of Mount Olympus and then you fight next to Gaia's heart at the end. Incredible. A very fitting finish to the early God of War series. And did you like the first person mode that you get? Oh, I love it. It's so good. Was it as good as The Rock's Doom first person? (laughs) (laughs) Holy fuck. In the end, Kratos opens Pandora's box. To nothing. Him opening it in God of War 1 to beat Ares released all the evils into the world, including Zeus's fear Kratos would kill him. Which was well founded, because he does. <laughs> <laughs> but there was something else inside. Hope. An actual power, not the concept or human spirit. Uh, and instead of giving this power to Athena to rebuild the world, Kratos kills himself. The sacrifice giving the power to humanity. We're left on a picture of ruin and a blood-soaked ground leading off a cliff. Hmm, a little death never stopped Kratos before. Uh, uh, you know, the rules of things, if you don't see him die on screen, it doesn't count. Tap the temple, see, yeah. tap the temple. Also want to count, uh, it's a bit cheeky of him to like, I'm going to sacrifice myself so that humankind can live on. Because throughout the events of God of War 3, when he kills the god of the seas... <laughs> He floods the entire world. He kills everyone. And then when he kills Hades, you know, like it opens up the gates of hell and sends plagues and everything for the people who were on the top of mountains. So as he kills the gods, he fucks everybody over. So then he can make the sacrifice to unfuck them. The Furies were brought forth. Neither Titan nor God, mortal nor shade. Steve, God of War Ascension. Yeah. I It's like when I was researching this. Oh yeah, that game existed. Yeah, it did. Like, it was fun to play, but in my opinion, it's the worst of the series by a mile. Other than making money and having more <laughs> Kratos... There's no reason for this game to be a thing because every new character that they bring in, uh, you know they can't let them live because Kratos has already killed everybody anyway. So it's just utterly pointless. It's gorgeous looking though. Hmm. It's like Spaceballs 2, the search for more money. Yeah. (laughs) The PS3 prequel to the franchise with no real bearing on the story overall. It's set during when Kratos renounces Ares he breaks his blood oath and is imprisoned by the Furies. So it's, you know, set there. And with help from Orcos, tries to escape. Yeah. So this game is set between the events of God of War 1 and God of War 1, right? <laughs> <laughs> like total faff, right? Uh, did you play the handheld games? I played both of them, yeah. Oh, wow. Calliope! Upon seeing his daughter, Kratos realised that all that he had been working for, all that he had wanted... Was within reach. Steve, PSP, Chains of Olympus. Find the god of light, Helios. Uh, what do you think of this one? It's not bad. Obviously, it's very much held back by the fact that it was made on PSP. Because, you know, God of War is all about spectacle and scale and just being bigger than any other game out there. And they just couldn't do that. But what it does have is a very solid core game that you could play, you can kill enemies, uh, you can go to the end and you can fight Persephone and you chain Atlas to the bottom of the world and that's how he's holding up the world. And he just got, ah, my back! Ah, <laughs> man! With the release of the fire steeds, Kratos was now in the hands of the beasts and where they would take him, he did not know. Thoughts on it? I'd probably say it's my second least favourite of the series, but the gap between this and the bottom with the God of War 3 prequel, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, is huge. This is still a good game. 
Oh, okay. I, like I play this one on my bros PSP. Most interesting bit is he's in the underworld and meets with his deceased daughter, Kali. Calliope! Thank you, Stephen. Calliope! So he's given a choice, stay with her and let the world go to ruins or continue on. But it's not really a choice as Atlas is going to cause the end of Olympus, killing him anyway. And you get the meanest QTE there's ever been, where you have to mash circle to push your daughter from you. And she's trying to cling on to her daddy. And he's like, fuck off, Calliope. (laughs) It's so mean. Is this like Hulk Hogan and Dixie Carter? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Exactly the same. Kratos is able to rescue Helios and rides his chariot into the sky. Find Deimos. He needs you. Mother. And Steve, PSP's Ghost of Sparta. See Zeus knocks up a Spartan woman, Callisto. She has two sons, Deimos and Kratos. Deimos was stolen away because of the patricide prophecy, and Kratos sinks Atlantis en route to reuniting with his bro. Just in time for Thanatos to off him, and then Kratos gives him the same fate, and rebuffs Athena's pleas for forgiveness, saying, The gods will pay for this. Nice, nice. Uh, What do you think? This is a surprisingly excellent game. I really like how they added in the lore of his brother. So Zeus had a fear of a marked soldier killing him. And Deimos was born with the red birthmark. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he took him. And so Kratos, to honor the memory of his brother, got Deimos' birthmark tattooed on him. And so that's why he's got the red marks. Plus this game added in like a really cool thing that they didn't bring back until this God of War that we're going to talk about. You had a buddy with you that you could get to throw spears at people and to attack people and they had like combo moves and it was super fucking awesome and Deimos was a really really cool character and the leap between Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta were huge I have no clue how they managed to get what they did out of the PSP fair play to them Sparta never lets his back hit the ground right brother Son of a bitch. (laughs) Oh, what's up, boys? Ian from 616 Entertainment here. Look, I'm enjoying the retrospective so far, but you're not finished with the franchise just yet, are you? What about God of War for mobile phones? (laughs) No way. Tell us about it. talk about God of War Betrayal. It was a Java mobile game by Java Grounds and Sony Online Entertainment. It released three months after God of War 2. So we're talking PlayStation 2 era, and it actually predates the first PSP game. So this is the first God of War spinoff. Betrayal was a 2D side-scrolling hack and slasher. Kind of like if God of War came out on the Super Nintendo. Uh, just a really Ooh. restrained, held-back Super Nintendo game. Now remember, this was June 2007. Mobile phones were not what they are today. The first iPhone hadn't even been released yet. And to have this thing hit the widest market, the game needed to run on a ton of different phones. You got the Nokia N95, the Sony Ericsson K750, Blackberry Curve, even that Motorola (laughs) shitbox. So we're talking insane constraints here. You got 350 kilobytes of memory to work with, which is comparable to a Cheez-It. Big (laughs) decisions have to be made on this front. So do you want background music or do you want sound effects? You only get one. Make your choice. You want boss fights? You get one. I'm telling you, it had to run on the lowest common denominator of phone. The combat was super simple. You got light, long-ranged attacks. If you get closer, you can smash boys. You got a button mash, and you can only press one button at a time, so there is no button to just jump. If you jump, you're jumping diagonally forward. It's that sort of deal. 
it was very limited because the game wasn't built to sit down and play for a couple hours and run through chapters at a time. This was made to kill a couple minutes while you wait for the bus. That's just the way it was. It was called an entertaining time waster by designer, producer, director, Philip Cohen. Wow. Entertaining time waster. He knew what he was bringing out to the masses. I like that the refreshing honesty that you only get like... 15 years after the fact and there's no money to be made <laughs> properly be buried, you know? What's the story, Spartan glory? <laughs> well, if you're wondering what God of War Betrayal is about, Kratos runs through Greece with the Spartan army wrecking the gaff. He's falsely accused of killing Hera's pet, the giant Argos. So Kratos tracks the assassin that did and batters the lads from Hades for reasons. Zeus sees all of the destruction and wants to break it up, break it up, you know, like Jack Tony, you know. <laughs> uh, he sends down messenger Serix, but you kill him, which pisses off Zeus even more, and that leads into God of War 2. Three months after it was released. <laughs> See, it, usually mobile phones are less than six months in development, but this ballooned to over nine months, which is unheard of for a mobile game at the time. But it was worth it. It was definitely worth it because they put that extra effort in and it took a little more time, but the game got high praise when it was released. You didn't take up so much memory with the soundtrack and they were able to spend that memory on animation and environment tiles. They can make it look more fluid, more pretty. This was way above the general level expected from a Java game. And better still, they worked with the God of War team who let them do their thing. You got all the expected tropes like the small platforming sections, kind of like Prince of Persia. You had some light puzzles mixed in there, you know, put this deal over there. And as you can see, the delicious and bloody, gory pixel action, decapitations, tearing people in half, it's all there. So God of War Betrayal hit the mark. It nailed what it set out to do. God of War compressed into a Java game in 2007. In less than 500 kilobytes, it's pretty damn impressive. Now, it's obviously aged pretty badly due to how powerful phones are today and what our expectations of today are, but... Back then, in 2007, this was a technical marvel. It was the high watermark for Java mobile games. So yeah. <laughs> it's a rough modern experience, but cheer up, Kratos. It's still literally the best native God of War game on your phone. Yeah. Nice. Oh man, that's awesome. Launch it in, man. Thanks for the walk on, and uh, yeah, amazing job on your God of War retrospective over on Six One Six. Amazing work, bro. Thank you so much. Ah, winner is you. God of War as a franchise and its importance in history. <laughs> don't want to overstate that, but yeah. So uh, talk about God of War clones. Oh, man. Uh, so from the time of God of War 2 until the kind of early to mid-2010s, we were bombarded with just God of War clone after God of War clone. That is a long time. <laughs> it is, it is. Like, you know, it's like seven or eight years of video game companies seeing this game make money. And it's like, well, you know, there's only one of them. So maybe a second one won't hurt or a third one or a fourth one or a fifth one. Uh, but before I do go on, I do want to say God of War is not the first. Hack and slash. Yeah. Third person. Yeah. Uh -oh. Definitely not. I think I'd say Devil May Cry would be the first one that I'd think of when I think of, like, 3D, third-person, action-adventure, hack-and-slash, combo-based games. God of War definitely lifted a lot from that, but I think it did enough to carve its own niche and to set it apart from Devil May Cry, which is very highly skilled. Like, it's a very difficult game, especially if you want to do well, whereas God of War went more for the kind of action-spectacle Hollywood blockbuster and did it amazingly well. So well that people copied God of War more than they did Devil May Cry. Hmm. 
Okay, so quickie rundown of the biggest God of War clones. Hmm. So now Johnny is in hell. And he ain't too pleased about it. One of the earlier ones was for the PS1. Actually came out before God of War 2. Marvel's Ghost Rider. Oh, wow. With yeah. Nicolas Cage in that. <laughs> With Nicolas fucking Cage. <laughs> um, Does he get attacked by bees? <laughs> <laughs> Not the bees or the bees. This is just a direct ripoff of God of War. It does nothing to separate itself from the first game other than you don't play as a Greek soldier, you play as a flaming night biker guy. Hmm. It's the same combat, it's the same kind of battering enemy until Circle pops up, and then you press the buttons that appear on screen and he kills them. It just does everything slightly worse than God of War, because it didn't have as much money, it didn't have as much time to make it either. But it was okay. As Guardians... The Jotun have come for what is rightfully ours. Wrong, Jotun. You've come here to die. Next up, Thor God of Thunder. Uh-huh. 2011, developed by Liquid Entertainment. Yes, and set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, loosely. You play as Thor, the God of Thunder, in a lifeless hack and slash game that harkens back to the time of shitty movie <laughs> I would say the only positives about this game are the fact that it has the voice cast from the actual movie so uh, was this for Chris Hemsworth before while he was still Shakespeare <laughs> I'm a Shakespearean in a high school <laughs> play production exactly yeah, yeah. before um, he's cool <laughs> Loki uh, as played by Tom Hiddleston and uh, Lady Sif as played by <laughs> uh-huh, by yeah. the woman on screen yeah pretty girl though mm. But yeah, much like most Hollywood actors in video games, they didn't really give a shit and they phoned it in. Completely dull, lifeless game. Did they phone it in as bad as Tyrion from Game of Thrones? Ooh. What was that game he was in? Destiny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he played the ghost in the original game and did such a terrible job and refused to come back to do, like, you know, more scenes that they had to completely replace him with Nolan North. Oh, wow. Who did, did he, an amazing job. Did he show up like Krusty in the recording <laughs> yeah. session? It's like, hey, 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 kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Sideshow Bob. Say again, Sideshow Bob. <laughs> I fear even Odin is no match for the creature, weakened as he is from the Odin sleep. The Odin sleep? Why was father in the Odin sleep? But I'm being bada boom, I'm done. Learn from a professional, kid. <laughs> Wolverine X-Men Origins. Ooh, yeah. Um, 2009, developed by Raven Software, who will help Treyarch with their Call of Duties. Yeah, and who have since been relegated from making anything other than Call of Duty, despite being a ridiculously talented dev team. Hmm. It's quite sad. Hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, based on the movie of the same name, Wolverine... Sorry, go on. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait. The, Does it have the same name? The finished movie or the one with the green screen? <laughs> 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 Sorry, go on. Oh my God. Yeah, so based on the movie of the same name, uh, Wolverine is actually a solid God of War clone that was a rare movie tie in that A, wasn't shite, and B, may have been better than the actual movie that it was based on. Oh. Yeah, yeah. For Not one, necessarily compliment. <laughs> yeah, well, one, Jackman actually cared and he did a solid job. And two, the video game was incredibly violent and it saw you literally carve up enemies, which is kind of what Wolverine does. You know, mm-hmm. like he's a short little angry man who batters people. Yeah, like it's, a Wolverine, yeah. Yeah. And the best thing about this game, it has a damage model system where. Logan's character model has like muscle and vessels underneath and bone and as you're fighting your character is like hacked to pieces and then once the action is over his healing factor kicks in and he slowly comes back to health. So really nifty gimmick. Hmm.
Next up, Darksiders. Oh yeah, nice a nice bit of a uh, Zelda clone-ish. Yeah, it's like this as well. It's like if God of War and Zelda had a baby, this is what you get. Mm. Um, so I played the first one when it came out on the Xbox 360, like 2010. Mm, developed by Gunfire Games. Yes, sees you play as War, not God of, mm. and slay thousands of enemies. It's you know the same basic combat that you've got here: light attacks, heavy attacks. And then combo abilities to finish baddies off. But it does have the added bonus of dungeons and like heavy puzzling, opening chests, getting gear, much like Zelda. So uh, yeah, a really good game. Solid like 8 out of 10. But I do remember it being very difficult. And I didn't beat it, even though I did play it. Uh, If he gets an item, does he hold it over his head? (laughs) (laughs) Like a metal remix of it? (laughs) Yeah. Dear me, such a heavy sword for such a fragile creature. Come, child, let me take your burden. Never! Next up, Heavenly Sword. Ooh, yeah, 2008, developed by Ninja Theory, who also did Enslaved, DMC, Devil May Cry, Great game. and Hellblade 1. Senu- Senu was Senu was something. Oh, Senu was Sacrifice. The first one, there's a new one now. Yes, yeah, oh my god, the second one looks incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do own Senu was Sacrifice, I just haven't played it. I just uh-huh. haven't had time. I've heard it's great though. Oh, it's very God of War-y, like yeah. modern God of War-y, so yeah. Nice. Heavenly Sword. This game, when it came out, was a graphical showcase for what the early PlayStation 3 could do. Did it like, have motion controls? <laughs> <laughs> it did. Can you fly a dragon? It had with, with the six axes. Fucking shoveled in motion based yeah combat. so you could like <laughs> fire a bow or you could throw your shield like cap and you could use the six axis to whoa oh, okay, and okay. aim it yeah. you know it's like a solid gimmick to write down on paper but then when you play it it's like oh, i'd really rather just use the pad yeah. to do this mate you know anyway gorgeous game borrowed heavily from god of war again light attacks heavy attacks press circle to do your finisher definitely when it comes to bosses but where this game did do well is in the like voice acting writing and direction. I believe that they got uh, Andy Serkis in, and he mm-hmm. Very good. played the part of the baddie, and he directed some of the scenes. Mm. Yeah, it's a yeah. good game. Same thing with uh, Enslaved in 2009. That's a Whopper game, but I fucking love that game. Monkey. So good, yeah. Monkey magic. It's monkey tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Does he pull a hair off his chest and blow on it? <laughs> <laughs> monkey magic. Monkey magic. Your corpse will hang from my axe before the day is through. You talk too much, dog. Lift your blade. You talk too much. You never shut up. Okay, and now for the worst of all the God of War clones. Oh no. The Conan game from 2007. Ooh, developed by Instigate Games, who make spin-off Vita games for COD and Resistance. Oh my god. Not an original bone in its body. Like, all of the other games that I've talked about, maybe with the exception of uh, Ghost Rider, they at least try to do something with the God of War base. But this is just shameless, the exact same thing, everything... Even Conan is a dick in this game. Like, he doesn't do anything other than, like, drink and... You know? He's a fucking lout. Steve, is he bowdy bowdy? <laughs> yeah, bowdy bowdy. Good, go Conan. Um, so, 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 yeah, like, this game takes everything that made God of War great, with the exception of the scale and the world and the production value and the interesting <laughs> bosses. <laughs> Just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. Don't play this game. Oh. You want to live... You'll come with me. Strong words from a fair lady. Beatrice! Uh, so I've saved my two favorites for last. Uh, we'll go with Dante's Inferno. Oh, next. Whopper. Yep. 2010 game about a Templar knight, Dante, who has to fight through the nine circles of hell to rescue his main squeeze, Beatrice, from Lucifer himself. So much like the first part of Dante Alighieri's uh, Divine Comedy. What do you think? Solid game, man. I remember at the time people gave it hate. Really? Oh, that's a shame. Like, because they said it was too much of a shameless ripoff. But I thought it kind of did enough to put itself on a, you know, a similar level, but slightly off to the left, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I did like how Dante had two weapons. So in the opening of the game, you kill death and you take a sigh. 
but then you also have your holy cross which is your like distance weapon you know you can fire like bolts of holy energy at the evil enemies of hell and keep them at bay but other than that very very god of war you know you cut your way through swathes of enemies and then come across some pretty decent looking bosses to be fair beaten with qtes Mm -hmm. there's two parts of this game which stay in my memory so well the circle of lust uh, yeah, uh, I was making that a rectangle. Steve. <laughs> Which, well, one, you're killing like babies, so it's kind of like Dead Space Two, you know, where you're killing oh, those yeah, yeah, little yeah. creepy baby mm. fuckers. And then the boss, you take on Cleopatra, coming at you. <laughs> it's definitely not that. No. So big giant Cleopatra who has her wabos out <laughs> and shoots enemies out of her nips. Excellent. Great stuff. Well done. Yeah. You just demonetized the video. Thanks. <laughs> pew pew. And you know, other kind of circles of hell, like there was lust. It's like you're fighting inside this animal's belly. It's kind of wet and pus everywhere. And and you're Slimy fighting. Slimy and murky. And sli- yeah. And you're fighting these giant fat enemies. And then there's greed, which everything is gold. So yeah, some really, this really... This is all solid stuff. Some really, really cool things about this game. I do remember being furious at it for once, though. Uh, when you're getting towards the end, I think you're in, like, the circle of violence. You have to go through trials or tests. And one of those tests is that you have to keep an enemy juggled in the air for eight seconds. And I remember screaming at the television because, you know, you get the six or seven 20 times in a row. Mm-hmm. But before you get the eight, oh, <laughs> Yeah, so fuck that bit. <laughs> the game is still a yeah. solid 8 out of 10, yeah. and I'd recommend it. So it deserves a better slot in history. Definitely does. And my favourite oh. of all the God of War clones. Go on. Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Oh, uh, yeah, 2010, developed by Mercury Steam. Ha ha ha! Who made Metroid Dread? Yeah! Fucking beauts! Well done, lads. Yeah, you're getting two deep dives from OSW. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, oh, wait. No, you're not. <laughs> no, no. no it, not. This is not getting no, a deep dive. Well done. But it is an excellent game. Mm. What do you like about it? I thought that the combat was excellent. Uh, I would say it was a bit more refined than Dante's Inferno. But the cast in this game was fucking fantastic. The main character, played by Robert Carlyle, Ah. And his mate played by Patrick Stewart. Oh, no way. Yeah. Um, is it like extras Patrick Stewart when he's like, his special <laughs> power is blowing girls' skirts up? <laughs> but it's like, she can she can pat it down, but I, I've seen it all. <laughs> they managed to tell her somehow. Praise be to God. Scrabbling around to get them back on again, but even before she can get her knickers on, I've seen everything. You know, I've seen it all. This game is gorgeous. Absolutely yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. One of the main things that I remember like 12 years later is the soundtrack uh, was exceptional. Absolutely beautiful. So nice that I went out and like put it on my MP3 player. On, on your Zune. On my, I did have a Zune. <laughs> I did, yeah. Me and Peter Quill. Yeah. The only two people. It's called a Zune. It's what everybody's listening to on Earth nowadays. It's got 300 songs on it. 300 songs? And some of the boss fights, it did borrow from Shadow of the colossus so you've got these giant hulking monsters that you have to climb up mm-hmm. uh, and get to their weak spot and amazing attack music that plays yeah. to take them out while gorgeous music plays in the background yeah definitely recommend and i remember it having an incredible ending that jumps forward like 600 years in time and you find dracula in a church and then the, the kind of like doors open and you're in like modern world. That's your setup for the sequel. And then the sequel bombed. Aww. Yeah. They tried to put too much in it and people went, this is bloat. And then they didn't buy it. But yeah, uh, this is my favorite God of War clone. I think it's absolutely great and I would recommend it. Uh-huh. Okay. Man, that was an excellent section, Steve. Thank you so very much. God of War inspired all of these games. Like that's how big of a game changer that it was its importance in video game history yeah think about all those franchises that wouldn't have happened or wouldn't be shaped by this game yeah and like even if the games weren't great someone out there either thought that the core of god of war was good enough or that the fan base was big enough that they could make money off it and most of them did great stuff quite enjoyed that so we got god of war 4 
making of. Big banger, The Last of Us, of this new game. <laughs> like, it's like they saw The Last of Us and Joel and Ellie and said, this is what we need for God of War. And they did. <laughs> they actually asked, hey, Naughty Dog, can you help us out with this? Naughty Dog were consulted with Santa Monica on Atreus's AI. Ah. Oh, by the way, there's something that we didn't mention. The original God of War games, you said they were made by Sony Santa Monica. The brainchild of... The, no, he, <laughs> the David <laughs> <laughs> Splice uh, David Jaffe yeah, the, Of Metroid Dread fame And of uh, YouTube shoot fame <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah I'm not I'm not worried about it I just I'm, I'm high sir God of War 4 Five years this one took to make Wow Interest in Kratos after God of War Ascension, a prequel to the entire series that has no impact on the overall story, was low. People were done. Either reboot completely or go away. Between that, God of War Ascension, and this new game, creative director Cory Barlog got married and had a kid. And he describes the new God of War as a deeply personal story, like emotionally, like he doesn't carry a Leviathan axe. Yeah. <laughs> but you I'm- know. I mean, like, as a parent, there are scenes in this game that you can tell were made with someone thinking about their child. And it hits, you know? And it's all the better for it. Yeah. So the main people in charge of making God of War 4 are Corey, Ariel, Jeet, and Shannon. The big scow was that there were lots of layoffs and merging companies, meaning Santa Monica got 110 extra people. They described it as a kind of 1.5 studio with a bigger team working on two IPs simultaneously and sharing resources. Mm -hmm. Um, So at the end, it was 150 people worked on God of War. So you can't do a new God of War. You need a new God of War. It has to be bigger and better, obviously, but different and fresh. Originally set in Egypt. Check out this cinematic. And Atreus is there. He calls Atreus over. Uh, It's like, oh, we're definitely getting Egyptian mythology sometime after Ragnarok. Oh, completely. We're doing it. We are getting Egypt, Celtic, with, you know, like the Druids and with the different gods. Uh, They could compete in the Bjeltana tournament. Oh, they could go to fucking Trim. (laughs) You could kill a dog by playing hurling with it. Uh, You could go to Tir Nanok. Uh, on a ho- like, like there's so much you could yeah, do. I'm totally down for it. Yeah, yeah. So like, if your gimmick is killing gods, you can do Hindi gods. You can go to Japan and take on their like oni and the demons. Oh, oh, get it. This is all like, good. Come stuff. on, this like, quality stuff. Like, seriously, this series has as much legs as always. Don't you? <laughs> there's so many errors and things to like cover. You know. Way to bring it back, Steve. <laughs> E3 2016, Corey does a live eight minute playthrough unveiling God of War upon the world. It's cool, you can actually see him, one dude, controller in hand, playing on screen at the event, streaming to millions. Amazing. I remember marking out, absolutely marking out. Then show me what you know. I am hungry. Ah! Slow down, boy. Sorry. Yeah. You, you get ch- even even watching it for the review, man. You get chills watching it. Yeah. And everyone, rightfully so, lost their shit. Yeah. From then on, it was crunch and squash bugs, an intense, highly collaborative project, pushing confront problems immediately and face to face. Like, so it was kind of a, an open environment where they allowed people to fail and fix everyone's problems together. You know, don't take it by yourself. You know, like, anyway, it's very. That sounds like a pretty decent uh, place to work. Mm. Drill, 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 squash, squash, squash. Near launch, there's a clip of. Uh, at this point, our aim was to have zero bugs. We currently have over 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> Upon launch, zero critical bugs, and that's what's pressed onto disc. God of War was released upon the world April 20, 2018, just over 11 years since Corey's first God of War, God of War 2. Two rapturous applause. 
Alright, so with all of our hot dogging out of the way, we'll journey through the storyline beat by beat. That is, of course, Stephen, are you a calm and reasonable person? I haven't been called that many times in my life. To be <laughs> Well, anyway, let's get to it. <laughs> Cold open. Faye, Kratos' wife, is dead and you are building a funeral pyre. Her final wishes are for her ashes to be scattered from the highest peak in all the realms, the mountaintop. Very much a change of pace from what you normally get in a God of War opening. God of War 1 opens with you on a ship killing the Hydra, one of the most famous beasts. Slice his throat (laughs) and grab his throat. (laughs) God of War 2 opens up with you killing the Colossus of Rhodes. Good day. And God of War 3 opens up with you climbing up a moving mountain, taking on a giant water horse the size of a mountain, killing a god and flooding the entire world. Mm. Um, so, uh, God of War 4? You chop down a tree uh-huh. and you get in a boot. But uh, he does grab a massive tree and it's straight out of Commando <laughs> with yeah. uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that's actually the inspiration for it. <laughs> Brilliant. 170 years have passed since God of War 3. You play as Kratos with always by your side son Atreus living in the woods. The overarching storyline is the two must journey to the highest peak of the mountain to scatter their mother's ashes. Your son Atreus is not ready so you go on a hunting expedition. This is a bit from the demo and in the demo an ogre comes out you know smashes and you have a bit of a fight and you just go across the bridge in this one and Atreus is like I thought there'd be an ogre. (laughs) while hunting a deer Atreus demonstrates that he isn't ready he needs help kind of sealing the kill he can't shoot the ogre and hits Kratos instead (laughs) (laughs) who's that knocking on the door (laughs) it's some loud braggart it's Conor McGregor (laughs) exactly totally he picks a fight and gets his wish I thought you'd be bigger you're definitely the one. Long way from home, aren't you? You talk too much. <laughs> you talk too much. Never shut up. Yeah, what would you think? Oh my god. A um, stranger knocks on your door and you right into a boss fight. Amazing. Well, first of all, I was going to talk about how incredible this character looks and his hair and how it moves and he's covered in tats and everything. And I love how they don't tell you who you're fighting. You just know it's some guy who's capable of going toe-to-toe with Kratos. So he's some mythological being. They're fighting. They're running through boulders. They're picking up 10 tons of boulders and bricks. And they're both wrestling. And they're trying to get the better of each other. And they're splitting the earth. This is an epic opening fight. It's absolutely incredible. It is very cool. Only negative, I thought it was like really, really long. So it turned out to be a bit of a slog. Um, Did you find it hard? Not a hard, just long. You yeah. Know? Um, it was actually supposed to be three times longer, but they trimmed it. <laughs> it was just like, oh, thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. Okay, so it's a wildly cinematic, bombastic bout, but as ridiculous as the punishment as they take, like they sell moves normally, like getting a big uppercut, but are unharmed. Yeah. So it's like, well, both of you can go till the end of time. You're not going to affect each other, you know? Like, uh, he gets a giant rock slid onto him and it's nothing. In the end, the stranger's rear guard is awful and he gets choked out and his neck broken. <laughs> I was going to say, just like Conor McGregor. <laughs> he talked a big game. <laughs> he did, he did. And then he got tapped out. The stranger is thrown off the cliff. And if you have a free camera, you can actually go find Balder and you zoom into him. And he's actually his body is posed doing a double bird. <laughs> That's so awesome. That would have been programmed back in, what, 2014 when they were making it? It was like, this is the long con for this troll. <laughs> Brilliant. Gather your things. We are leaving. But I wasn't ready. You are not. We have no choice now. The baddies know where they live, so it is not safe. The two leave for the mountain immediately, despite Atreus not being ready. 
surveying the land, Atreus sees there was a protective enchantment around their land, but part of it is broken, which is how the bodies got in. Breaking the stave was intentional, as Faye marked those specific trees to be broken down for her funeral pyre. She knew this would happen. Kratos ponders this, and they continue. Oh. Looking back on it, it's like, Faye knows Kratos procrastinates, like Atreus not being ready, like he is ready. You got So he needs to be kind of pushed out of his safety zone. Yeah. So the storyline is threefold. Make it to the top of the mountain to scatter your mom's ashes. Teach Atreus to become a good man, both mentally and physically. And you haven't told him about your past as the coast of Sparta. And that he's half god. Oh, oh yeah, and that stranger, the invincible god, is hunting you down. But I hit it, didn't I? I did what you said and it looked like it bounced off. Ooh, chance for another hunt. You see a fancy boar. And shoot. Can you give us a shoot sound? Foof. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you call it? Foof. Atreus pegs it after and you get lost in the fog. You find him with a woman who scolds you for shooting an animal for target practice. It's a witch of the woods. And later learn her name is Freya. Collecting ingredients to heal the boar, whose name is Hildesvini, a good friend of mine. You, <laughs> you get to walk around the area where the witch lives. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, isn't it? So incredibly the colours. Beautiful. Yeah. Lush and vibrant greens and reds, dense foliage. Oh, foliage? Overgrown in the most beautiful way. Uh, it's like rich. It's like this is not God of War. <laughs> yeah. Because you're used to reds and golds, you know, and stone, you know. Yeah, it's, whites and... Yeah. This beautiful, idyllic land. Anyway, amazing. Really stunning. Absolutely beautiful setting for a beautiful game. So I played this when it first came out. I played on PS4, on my 1080p monitor. Amazing. But I'm very glad to be able to play the PS5 version in 4K, 60 frames. It's stunning. I also need lamb's crest. Do you mind? It's a white petal flower in my garden. Just a handful. You better work, Chris. Fine. Lambs, Chris. <laughs> I'm a fucking god of war. <laughs> they come across Brock, a dwarf blacksmith, whose ride refuses to cross the bridge. Atreus senses the woods are alive and whispers something to the animal, who now complies. Brock notices your axe. He and his brother made it and upgrades it for free. The start of a beautiful friendship. A beautiful, glorious friendship. Great characters to add a bit of lightness and hmm. levity. I get an answer for you right now if it so pleases you, son of a bitch. To reveal the path forward, we meet the World Serpent. He's so big, when he raises out of the water, he lowers the overall level of the lake, revealing more places to duck. And Thor's statue. My goodness, like, the serpent is majestic. It's incredible. It's so huge. And I love how he doesn't, you know, go, All right, lads, <laughs> what the bloody story were you? <laughs> He's an otherworldly being. He's speaking, but it's some ancient or alien tongue that no one knows what he's saying. Mm. I think that's an awesome touch. Mm. I, I spent a lot of time just stop the boat and look at him. You know, but did you jump off it? <laughs> uh, the world serpent, uh, who absolutely looks like a boss battle, like an evil entity, is actually a good guy who wants to help you. Yeah, that's kind of how Atreus sees his dad as well. So it's uh, everything feeds into itself. Another dwarf. Should we? No. 
He is of no consequence. Uh, excuse me, but, um, how did you come by that, uh, axe? That is my concern alone. Exploring the newly discovered palace, they meet Sindri, the dwarf merchant Brock's brother. Since the brothers are at odds, they play a bit of can you top this with upgrading your weapons, which is great kayfabe for always getting an upgrade. Yeah, it is. And it works, you know, like Brock will do something and Sindri's like, oh, he's either ruining it. Let me do it. I'll make it all better. And then it just goes back and forth. I want to say I adore how Sindri carries the axe. Like he's a puny cowardly man and so when he grabs it he'll barely grab the pommel and like shuffle over kind of selling how massive and heavy this is great little touch hmm. you're leaving a blind pig for it's up a truffle now and again you must find another way up the witch wish she was here bet she could get us past this my magic is useless against the black breath and there's no way around it we're stifled as at the path to the mountain there's an evil smug with a carved face in the mountainside, the black breath emanating from it. But the witch shows up and says the light of Alfheim will break it. So hey, we're taking the Bifrost to Alfheim! hey Yeah! Oh, there's a bit of a ooh, new mam kind of thing. Eh? Oh, yeah. definitely. She's very like motherly to Atreus and she, uh, she seems keen. Like There's a bit where they're leaving her hut for the first time where Kratos' son says, will I ever see you again as she kind of bends in and says as much or as little as you want oh i think that's really really nice mm -hmm. by the way like uh bifrost and alfheim and like you forget that marvel don't own the mythology yeah it's not theirs it's everyone's you yeah know? it is cool isn't it and even like throwing an axe and recalling it oh wait hang on that <laughs> that's not chris hemsworth's you know they keep murdering the lighter it is war the end of one. The red one's lost. Here in Alfheim, there was a deadly war between light elves and dark elves. The dark elves won. And they won't let you take some of the light easily either. What do you think of Alfheim? Really cool. I think in terms of how it looked and how it felt, it may have been my favourite area of the game. Oh, wow. But because of how the gameplay works, I think I went into this like level one and then you're going in and you're facing like level two and level three enemies. So from a gameplay point of view, I thought this was the hardest part. And I felt like once you kind of got past this, you were kind of good, but it was quite difficult. I died the most here oh. uh, in the entire game. Hmm. Is there any cool fighting bits? Like my favorite bit was the big push towards the light at the end. Because you're on a kind of a, a twisting narrow path and just waves at them come at you and you just go, oh, let's do it! Oh, <laughs> in the hive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, when you're smashing enemies out of it and you build up your race like three times yeah, so, yeah, it's so, so that you can sprint forward like 20, 30 meters. That mad dash is probably my favorite part as well. Uh, just really, really cool stuff, man. I also liked how it was quite puzzle heavy as well you know when you're grabbing that blue rock and mm. you, you make the kind of hard light paths and uh yeah a uh, really really cool area looked great set the tone for the combat as well i did think that the boss here the dark elf leader guy he was a right bastard man he, <laughs> he battered me i'd say two or three times mm. yeah I just want to point out like the gorgeous nighttime otherworldly architecture. There's a shot when you're going to the blue door and it's like, oh my God. Um, oh, with, with like the massive arches yeah, that yeah, are yeah, in the yeah, middle of the yeah. lake. Mm. Yeah, it's really mm. cool, man. Sure you can handle carrying that? Don't want you to be lagging behind when we get attacked. Remain alert and quiet. Before you step into the light, you let Atreus hold your axe. And then you go in and then you're kind of lost in this void and you hear, is that your dead wife calling to you? And you're rushing and running to her. And before you can get to her, Atreus pulls you back out. And he just starts reaming you out of it, saying you were gone and I was scared and alone. And he's like, oh, it's only got a few minutes. And then you've kind of been talking long enough that you can look around and there are piles of dead elves around. Dead elves. You left him to fight, you know, an army, basically. And he kind of proved that he could do it as well. Mm. You know, he didn't die taking on this army of dark elves who won the war against the light elves. Yeah. So they're no joke, mm. which means your son is no joke because he's he's a demigod. Mm. Well, he's a demi demigod. Mm. He's like a very small baguette. <laughs> Like a brioche. Yeah. Mmm, delicious. 
<laughs> a, a successful journey, though, Atreus gets light arrows. Repelling the black breath near the summit, you see Sindri being attacked by a fucking dragon. What are you doing? We have to help him. Break right. Find an angle. Wait for my mark. Thank you. But it goes well. Uh, using a dragon tooth ripped from its mouth, Sindri is able to give Atreus shock arrows made from mistletoe. But it's not explicitly said. Do you want to talk about the boss fight or anything? What do you think? Taking on a dragon. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. It was my favorite boss fight of the game. No way! Oh, I love it. What about it? I liked how it was a puzzle boss. It's not just running up, hitting its toes until you do enough damage and his head drops. You have to dodge, block through the kind of shock waves that he sends, figure out that you have to grab the red yoke, throw it at its mouth while it's open to slowly break off its like armor plating. And then it falls down, you get to do your damage, you know, and then that's your kind of cycle. Then you do that a few times until you get a typical God of War boss <laughs> ending. Because up until this point, you've been mainly fighting regular enemies and a couple of trolls. And they all end the same way, which is, you know, like a little short cutscene where you jump up, break its neck a bit, and then pull down the big pillar mm -hmm. on its head. But this one's like a big, massive hook that drops down. You're swinging on it. The camera's panning around, zooming, shoving into its head. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I wanted more of this. I didn't mention it earlier. This game's gimmick is that no loading screens. It's like, so they try to do everything as one take. It's amazing. I don't know how they managed to do it. By very heavy doors that take a while to open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really impressive. Wow, we actually did it. And you! Ah! Uh, but, 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 nobody's killed a dragon for hundreds of years. Not since the grand culling of the worms. And unless I'm mistaken, you did all that for me. You are mistaken. Tattooed man. Tracks show he now travels with a child. Where would they go next? Tell me where they are, and I'll talk to Odin. Your father won't let me go, Baldur, and he won't let you kill me. You have nothing to offer me, so take your questions, take your threats, take these two worthless wankers, and piss off! Near the summit, we bonny Scotsman, Mimir, is imprisoned in a tree and taunted regularly for 109 seasons by McGregor and the boys, so is happy to help out with whatever you've got going on. Mimir was previously Odin's advisor, known for his knowledge, and drops some. The highest point in all the realms isn't this mountain, it's the giant's finger in Jotunheim. He'll come with to help out if you cut off his head and reanimate it with old magic, so you do such. And take him to the witch. And it's here we find out that she, the witch, is Freya, a goddess, the leader of the Vanir, the Valkyrie. Kratos chastises her for not telling him. Which, Cheek of him. <laughs> which is rich, <laughs> coming from him. Freya and Mimir both quietly warn Kratos to not keep his secrets from Atreus. Yeah, a god who thinks he's immortal doesn't end well. Mm. Let's see, Mimir in mythos is just a a head so i love how they shove air character in that he's not until kratos comes along and he changes history he chops off his head and now we have mimir hmm. i love when you go back up to the mountain and you can go back up and see his body and show it to mimir and he's like ah oh, that's not cool mate <laughs> <laughs> well that's a sight no man should ever see thanks for that so you've a talking head with you now. I was shocked that he wasn't with you for an hour and then leaves. Like, he is with you for the duration. Yeah. Like, you're a three-man team now. And he's great, infusing some wonderful snark to play off Kratos' stoicism and regales Atreus and ourselves with lore building. A great idea as you're on boats travelling a lot and the tales are all, like, 40-second snippets. Yeah, it's really cool. Weird that he's Scottish. Uh... Yeah that they didn't go for some kind of Norse accent. But he's a cool character. I really, really like him in the game. From a lore point of view, he's great. But he's also just a likable dude as well, you know? Mm. 
He's played by Alistair Duncan, who was in Shadow of Mordor as Caleb Rimbor. Oh. Um, Corey Barlog, the creative director, he had to fight for Mimir because originally they were just going to put him in a bag and he kind of talk. I don't know even know how that works, a talking bag. <laughs> but he was like, no, if we write it right and we get the right actor, it's going to be great. And he was correct. Yes, he was. Well done. Thank you for fighting for that. Why start with winter? It's from a song Mother used to sing. Don't I know that one? Winter lad. Quiet head. Doesn't like music either. Got it. Mimir blows the horn and summons the world serpent. It's the last living giant in Midgard and he'll tell us the way. We need three things, a travel room, a gateway and a special chisel to carve into it. The chisel is in the shard of a giant Thamor's hammer. But before you can get to it, you fight Thor's nephews, Magni and Modi, aka Troy Baker and Nolan North. <laughs> yeah, I love how these two guys are in everything. And in this game, they're like brothers. It's really awesome. Uh, yeah, Troy Baker, legally obligated to be in every video game. <laughs> and of course, Nolan North, David in The Last of Us. Yeah, well, yes. they're in, in as well as everything else. As, as, as yeah. well as everything else. I just want to talk like the build up to getting to this boss fight in terms of scale. Uh, oh, oh. It's probably my my favorite part of the game, and it really harkens back to the older series. In God of War Three, there's a section where you're climbing up one of the old titans. It's an entire boss fight slash level that takes place on the enemy that you're fighting, mm-hmm. and so you're like climbing up his legs and his arm. There's a bit where you rip off his nails, ah, uh, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Ab- absolutely incredible. So yeah, uh, it kind of made me think of that Kronos from God of War Three. This guy is fucking huge. The scale of it is so impressive. Like the jewel on a ring on his finger is the size of a, like a large mirror. Yeah. So if you can imagine the size of the giant that that's on, it's it's pretty amazing. Oh no, brother. The little freak's got a bow. What are we going to do? <laughs> what do you think of this Magni Modi boss fight? Really cool, man. Probably my second favorite of the game. It was difficult fighting two people at the same time is not easy but then when you get to the back-to-back section and oh, that's so cool the lethal weapon it and everything goes <laughs> dark and there's this kind of like chanting and, and the lads come out of nowhere and you've got to parry them with mm. your shield fucking great stuff it's so good it's so memorable just a massive massive thumbs up they smashed it Shut up! Calm yourself, boy. The tornado tag ends with killing Magni, and Modi hightails it. There's a really cool bit, actually, where the dad is in trouble, and Atreus, his, like, rage meter goes off, which sets off your rage meter, and you can go start smashing people, (laughs) and uh, your son is weak, and it's not until you go actually physically touch and attend to your child that your rage subsides. Oh, that's so awesome. It's like, oh, God, stop here. Like, they really got the parenting side of this down, you know? Like, Kratos is an animal, but he's more than that now, and they've worked his previous character into this. It made me think of the bit in The Avengers where Bruce Banner just, like, turns into Hulk, and someone says, wait a sec, don't you have to get angry? He's like, wow. I'm always angry. (laughs) I was like, that's Kratos. He was still fucked over by the gods. So I would imagine the memory of killing your wife and child and, you know, the fact that you're still covered in their ashes every day, that's still bubbling at the top. Mm. And so he can turn it on at any given notice. So he is the same character. He's just good at faking that he's not. And he's trying not to because he doesn't want to be consumed by his hate-filled emotions. Yeah, and he wants to raise a good son. Mm. Good stuff. You killed Mag. That he did. He was a god, but you killed him. Minor Aesir, perhaps, but I. And his father is Thor. Not minor. Not minor at all, him. Atreus is psyched and can't believe Kratos just killed a god, which are unkillable. <laughs> he's, he's, he's marking out to his badass dad. And he doesn't seem to suspect that his dad is anything but a dad. I was like, man, not too bright, this one. <laughs> My dad, batter your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Magni and Modi, they're the sons of Thor. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know this, Thor 
not in the Marvel world, but in the like you know no, an- mythology. ancient texts and things like that. Uh, when he's carrying his hammer, he has to wear uh, like a gauntlet. It's a godly weapon, you know. Uh, but Magni is so powerful; he's the only being ever known to be able to lift Mjolnir without the gauntlet. Mm. So Kratos easily took out <laughs> the most powerful being in the Norse mythos. Wow. Atreus has been coughing a lot and collapses due to him being a god and believing himself mortal. I, this is your fault, Kratos. Withholding the truth has him deathly ill. You take him to Freya for aid as the world turns to smoke, ash and haze, reacting to Atreus being near death, coupled with a bit of your own waking terror hallucinations. Yeah, it's great. I just want to point out here, any other game would have had your son collapse Kratos picks him up, fade the black, and then you're with the witch. And maybe she'd fix him there, or maybe you'd have to go on a fetch quest. But this game, because the theme of it is you know, like being a parent, the game forces you to carry your son back through that entire journey to get to the witch's house, which is what, seven or eight minutes long? Mm. But you're with him for the entire time, and uh, it's a master stroke. I think it's incredible. And they make you feel his lack of presence in the dialogue because everyone was usually chatting and chiming in and stuff and now he's gone the mood is totally sober and in gameplay you do have to fight some baddies and he's not there to help you out so you do feel like he's missing in the next mission you do so masterful stuff Freya open the door we need your help woman do you hear me it is urgent I'm still a god go away the boy has fallen ill! Freya! He is ill. Inside. There is a rare ingredient found only in Helheim. The keeper that protects the Bridge of the Damned. I need its heart. <laughs> While Freya works her magic, you must journey into Helheim without him to retrieve the heart of a troll which will help him out. But shit, man, your frost axe is useless in hell, so Kratos returns home to pick up some old weapons. Oh my fucking god. Just flip my shit, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And like, as someone who played the other God of War games, I didn't know what was quite happening until you're on that boat and a ghost appears. It's Athena. Holy fuck, they're like tying it all in. And then the kind of chanting Greek music slowly kind of picks up. And then when you get in and you open up the bunker in your house and you take out this played bag and you slowly unwrap it, I lost my shit. It's one of the best reveals in a game that I can think of. I was salivating at the thought of putting on the Blades of Chaos you know what? Blades of Chaos were the first two games. I think it's the Blades of Exile and just swinging them around and tearing the shit out of Frost <laughs> enemies. Ah, oh my God, that was so good. There's nowhere you can hide, Spartan. Put as much distance between you and the truth as you want. It changes nothing. Pretend to be everything you are not. Teacher, husband, father. But there is one unavoidable truth you will never escape. (laughs) You cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. That bit is a big bang of God of War 1 as well, just the style of gameplay. Here's your new toy, go play. Yeah, it's a 10 on 10 gaming moment. Only improvement that I'd have is if you got to do the scene and they started playing the God of War music for it. Um, here, a bit of spicy, because I think it's just a, like the God of War 2018. It's a bit of, you know, uh, emotional music. Yeah. But if it goes, dun, dun, da, da, dun, 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 da, da, dun. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you know. Anyway, there we go. You will always be 
In Helheim, Souls of the Dead, there's so many there because the Valkyries have gone missing and are not shepherding them. Man, that sucks, you're dead, and they still a fucking queue. Yeah. It's like um, Beetlejuice, you know, when you have to take your ticket and, and oh. go and wait to be called. <laughs> <laughs> In Helmheim, they like to torture the damned souls and can't distinguish you from the actual dead, so you hallucinate Zeus, who toys with you. Uh, I don't, yeah, it's scary, uh, whatever, but what's that beside you? The giant bird crow creature standing silently, just looking, and I was, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to fight you in the next game, aren't I? <laughs> uh, please. Uh, I love how they preempt it because Mimir is like, yeah, he's across the bridge. Don't ever cross there. And I was like, oh, there's no way back. Oh, yeah. We never go up to him, but we do get a better look at him when you're on the airship a bit later. You take the heart of the troll easy enough, and it's back to Witchy Woods. I can break the fever, but to heal... He must know the truth of what he is. I'm a god, boy. When I came to these shores, I chose to live as a man. But the truth is... I was born a god. And so were you. Atreus recovers and Kratos lays it all out. He's told of his true nature. He's a half-god. Actually, quarter-god? He would be Demi-Demi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And pretty quickly turns into a bratty little shit. Do not push me, boy. Fine. (gasps) Let me guess. Your brother isn't as talented as you, and his work is junk. Um, those things are accurate. Your point? It's all you ever talk about, over and over. Do something about it or shut up already. I see. His change is immediate when he finds out what he is. Oh, he's mean to Sindri. Yeah. Oh. Total dick. But like, not just Sindri. He's like, well, I'm a god, so I don't have to care about the thoughts and feelings of mere mortals and lesser beings. Fuck them. I do what I want. Yeah, yeah. And like, he responds to his usual tasks, like read this, whatever. Instead of saying, sir, it's like silence. Or whatever. And I was like, oh. (laughs) He says whatever once, which I'm sure was all the rage back in in Norway a thousand years ago. (laughs) Whatever. Yeah, we're sick of hearing about little people's little problems. What's terrifying is then when he's angry and shouting about Sindri, thunder cracks. Oh my god. Yeah. (laughs) That's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, I think our our demi-demigod might be... uh, slightly higher on the pecking order than Demi gives him credit for, mm. you know? For what you did to Magni. <laughs> My old father called me a coward. Looks like he did more than that. And they come across a severely weakened and broken Modi. Thor beat him for leaving Magni to die. And uh, Treus grabs his knife and he's warned not to. So he gets in his face, gives him shit, loses his cool, slits his throat... And then kicks him off the cliff. He kills his first god. So the son of the god killer is now a god killer. And he liked it. Kratos never liked what he did. He did because he felt like he had to. He he was on a quest. But Atreus did it for the crack. And Kratos is like, there are consequences to killing a god. And then Atreus is like, how do you know? (laughs) 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 Ah, Bollix. Da. (laughs) Touche. Nobody cared about him anyways. What's the difference? There are consequences to killing a god! Why? How do you know? How do you know? They strop to the top of the mountain before they enter Jotunheim. Baldur fight number two? No, it's a cutscene. Mostly. And the portal is destroyed. 
Ah, oh, man, I really like how Baldur's second fight is nothing like the first because I was expecting pretty much the same boss fight in a new yeah. place where they kind of uh, chip your health down kind of thing. But no, it's just a big cutscene, like awesome, dramatic, fun, way more effective. No slog here. Yeah. And Baldur shows that he is as bad in the mount as he is from the back guard. <laughs> <laughs> he can't hit Kratos at all. They fight on a dragon and all three crash back in Helheim. It's here we learn of Baldur's true nature. He's Freya's son, which we'll get to later in a separate section of the video. That's alright. The lads take a flying boat out of hell. The whole boat fight, big throwback to the very start of God of War 1. Totally, yeah. With the kind of flames going out and you have to juggle fighting enemies at the same time as you are keeping the flames going, which keeps your ship going. This was awesome. But I will say, this was the one time, the only time in this entire game, that after the Balder fight, when you're sent back to hell, that I went, ah, really? Again? Oh, okay. It was the one time that the game felt long. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it was a bit of a prick tease because I thought we were going to finish the fight and go up to the mountain. Now, don't get me wrong, it didn't last long because the game is still fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. But just for a few minutes, I was like, oh, fuck. Hmm. Sorry, I never mentioned it. The bit after you take the troll's heart uh, that you're going to give to Atreus, uh, you say, oh, what's that over there? And it's Brock. And he's like hiding behind whatever a little wall, and he's like, "Here, I'll, I'll fix your weapon. Here, give it, give it to me." <laughs> and he kind of scuttles off, and you try to look around. What, what are you doing at there? And he gives it back to you, uh, and it's leveled up. Oh, great stuff! Oh, my equipment's in Midgard. Be right back. Yeah, you don't suppose he nicked those, do you? There. Now they're ready for the winds of hell. Tears Rune. This is it. On the home straight, with the chisel, we enter Tears' secret room, which is full of deadly traps and tests of strength. Learning Tears' lessons, Atreus breaks out of his teenage strop, coming round, seeing more clearly. He's found his equilibrium. Mm, not the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Neo's ears prick up somewhere, yeah? Uh, your hard drive starts worrying. <laughs> Atreus's worry is that his dad hates gods so much, and we learn of such hateful gods, Odin and Thor. But there are good gods, and we can only pass Tyr's test by working together. Kratos and Atreus can be better gods. Like Tyr. This game goes out of its way to tell us that Tyr was the old Norse god of war, but he wasn't a vengeful god of war. He wasn't a war monger. Yeah, he shared his knowledge. Yeah. And he wanted to keep people safe rather than to win wars. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a very, very cool gimmick. Kind of hope we get to see him in the second game. Mm. Yeah, because they query that he's dead, but they don't tell us. Mm. We do get to see him in the second game. Um, there's a bit where Kratos is looking around and there's all these jewels and stuff and he sees some pottery and he's on it <laughs> doing his murderizing and he's like ah I get it and <laughs> smash it <laughs> so Atreus doesn't see but Atreus sees it anyway yeah I was yeah. like oh, oh brilliant is it the Keats poem the uh, ode to a Grecian urn mm. yeah really really cool gimmick there's also a second bit uh, when you're in tears kind of loot cave mm. A Treyas goes over to the corner and he picks up a knife and Mimmer goes, Oh, I haven't seen one of them in ages. It's as we call at home. It's a Shkian dove. Like, <laughs> is it? And, black knife. And then the camera pans over and it's a black knife. Oh, fantastic. I was like, oh, I love it. Celtic shit. It's going to happen, Jay. I'm telling you. And Atreus is like, can we keep it? And he's like, yeah, if you need something to butter your bread with. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Although the portal was destroyed, there is another way if they can find Mimir's missing eye. Guess where it is? It was in Thor's statue, which is now in the belly of the world serpent. That's true, because when we first wake up the world serpent, he hates Thor. And as he comes around to them, you see him take a big bite out of uh, Thor. Out of the statue, yeah. Fucking great. And it says, yeah, it's happy for you to rummage around in its belly. And just goes, ah, ah, ah. 
<laughs> it's so fucking cool. It's really cool. Man, I was playing this and I was getting flashbacks of Gears of War 2, oh. the other GOW game. Mm. There's a section in Gears of War 2 when you go underground, you have to take out this giant worm which is eating caves and it's sinking cities. Like in this, you have to go inside its belly. You have to work your way down along its body and you have to go to its heart and chainsaw its main arteries off. And from the time you chainsaw the first artery, you're timed because the cavity is filling up with blood. Fucking great. Definitely Uh, play it. (laughs) Yes. Well, brothers, I've been to many strange places, but this will be a new one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I've never been in a giant's belly hat. How about you, Father? Never one that was not trying to eat me. Oh, I really like this. Just like how terrifying it looks to paddle between its person-sized teeth. <laughs> and you just, oh my god. And it's a snake, meaning it's the longest belly to traverse. Kayfabe, uh, eating a still intact puzzle pulley system. <laughs> <laughs> That's bollocks. <laughs> After retrieving the eye, Balder has found them. We get forcefully ejected from the serpent's mouth and into our final boss fight. Because it's time for your main event. What's wrong? Something's happened. There! I'll deal with you later. Family first. <clears throat> this again? It's your main event! <laughs> Kratos and Atreus versus Balder with special guest referee Freya. I'm so relieved and impressed with God of War having a lengthy epic battle, but keeping it fresh, engaging and different. I expected a multi-part slog, chip damage, fist fight on the ground, but like, since Freya is there, she demands you two not to fight, pausing the action with her ground tentacles. I won't let you hurt him! No boy. Fine. Stop! Ah! No! No! Atreus! You're bleeding! Breathe, boy. Breathe. <laughs> Not my blood. <clears throat> what is that? What? Baldur's spell is broken. He is now vulnerable. Baldur's curse can be broken by mistletoe. Yes. See, in the mythology, Freya asked everything and every object to take an oath to not harm Baldur, except the mistletoe because she deemed it was too innocent and small to cause any harm to her son. Sindri gives the arrows to Atreus without any fanfare. When Atreus breaks his quiver, Kratos fixes it using a piece of the arrow. So even though when Freya sees them, she destroys them immediately, gives them replacements, there's still a little bit of mistletoe on his strap. That's good shit, man. And when he protects his dad, gets in between Balder and Kratos, he punches it, which cuts him open, meaning he's now vincible. Yeah. And Atreus gives us the awesome line, Not my blood. I don't care if he kills me. I will protect him. I will not let him die. Run in by the giant. Not Paul White. (laughs) (laughs) Hot tag by the world serpent. Before we get into the kind of finish of it, what do you think of this boss fight? I thought it was excellent. I thought it built on what the opening boss fight was. In terms of the mechanics, it's quite similar. You've got this godly man walking you down. You're still going to beat him by hitting him, blocking parrying to get an opening but they've got the extra layers of the vines which will you know pop in every so often to like pause you your son is there to help you he's not there in the opening fight and then of course uh, balder has his super saiyan god super saiyan powers so when he goes blue you hit him with red when he goes red hit him with blue 
my favorite part of it is when you and Atreus start tag teaming them for shot for shot in slow yeah. motion. Uh, like incredible catharsis as it's like you and Atreus are fully powered up and completely in sync. They even give you like a tutorial bit earlier with the kind of being on the ground and avoiding punches and that. So you can perform this bit second time around with ease. It's like, oh, so you feel p- empowered. Feel a you badass. Know? Yeah. Uh, let's finish this. Kratos lets Balder up to make his choice to forgive Freya, but opts to strangle her to death. Just before that happens, Kratos kills Balder, saying, The cycle ends here. Which is what Zeus says when he kills Kratos in so- God of War 2. Cycles and circles, Jay. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant. The cycle ends here. The cycle ends here must be better than this. Freya, he chose this. I will rain down every agony, every violation imaginable upon you. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell. That is my promise. He saved your life. He robbed me of everything. The grieving mother vows revenge on Kratos. Even if he was a bad guy that was going to kill her. He's her baby. Yeah, you killed my son. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) see you in the sequel (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah i mean like even if your kid is a piece of shit at the end of the day it's your child and it's your goal to see them through life no child should die before the parent dies yeah and even if the world is a worse place with balder in it and a better place with freya in it she'd gladly lay down her life so he lives yeah and that was supposed to be her decision and so she hates you for it yeah i've seen people say that this bit is bullshit Ah, uh, you know, like there's good and bad and she's good and he's bad and she should have killed him or let him die. It's like, it's not how the world works. It's not black and white, you know? Not even the NWO was black and white. <laughs> yeah. We had Jeff Jarrett and Scott Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> blood is blood and it matters more than right and wrong. Hmm. And that's just the truth of the world. We will be the gods we choose to be. Not who have been. Final scene. At Journey's End, use the Bifrost to Jotunheim. Your friends have come to see this. It's, like, oh. it's so good. <laughs> They're like waving you off and <laughs> wishing you luck. And yeah, it's, it, it, it's sweet. And you and the boy walk through the giant's temple. You see murals of the journey you've been on. Faye was a giant herself, has seen the future and has told people of your journey. Who carved all these runes on the wall? Someone who badly needed a pen. (laughs) (laughs) So mom was a giant. Was she a dwarf? Atreus has the answer. They're a race, not indicative of size. Although the world serpent is a giant who is a giant serpent. Yeah. Some of them aren't, some of them aren't. Long answer, yes with a but. Long (laughs) short answer, no with a if. I also like how this is very similar to the Greek gods and the titans. They're both otherworldly, godly deities, and they were at war. It's quite a similar thing to what's going on here as well, you know? Mm. You release your mother's ashes into the wind. Just make sure you check which way the wind is blowing, Donny. (laughs) 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 There's a bit in Afterlife. Uh, with Ricky Gervais Ricky Gervais someone's dead and he goes to spread the ashes and some of it goes in someone's face and they're going oh dude Jesus Christ and he goes fuck off it's ashes it's the person's last wish he's like no that's not cool and he goes well I hope that bit that went in your mouth was his fucking cock (laughs) (laughs) brilliant that's great Atreus drops a bomb Faye referred to her son by a different name Loki but he prefers a trace. <laughs> and credits roll. You see, it's pretty cool that the credits roll, but you're still, you have to walk back walk down. Walk back. That's, it's, it's very cool. And also, before you actually spread the ashes, Loki goes out onto the mountaintop and the wind blows and it moves a bit of uh, fabric and Kratos sees one last mural 
and it's him dying as what we believe is Loki killing him and there's a giant snake coming out of his mouth. Uh, I, do, I don't know if you know what that's hinting at or not. What? The son of a dad killer and a dad dad killer <laughs> is killed by a son? <laughs> what? <laughs> but, you know, timelines are all crazy in this because obviously yeah. the giants knew what was going to happen. But I'm fairly sure that in the Norse mythos, Loki is... Yeah, that's... Yes. Yeah. So at some point, he's... Yeah, it's all going to go crazy and Kratos is going to die. He goes to the Mushroom Kingdom. He gets some really bad <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> A real bad trip. <laughs> yeah. Let us go home. I love this with the credits still going, but you're on the way back down the mountain. It's really very much, hey, you can do those side quests if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and the world is still going to be open, lads. Mm, there's two good bits of ska post-credits. If you go to Freya's gaff, the two lads will say, it's not a wise idea. Don't knock it. Uh, but you can't go in. Uh, is it a good idea coming back here? She's probably in there planning your demise, brother. But you can go back home and finally get to rest. And then it fades to black. It comes back in a few years later. There's some ruckus outside. Kratos grabs a shit, opens the door, and is confronted by Thor and like a cowboy who moves his poncho out of the way, you get to see Mjolnir and a little spark of lightning and credits. Amazing. Holy fuck. So Atreus gets a vision of the future. Thor has come to whoop ass. <laughs> it's, oh my God. And that will lead into Ragnarok. I love that towards the end of the game, they start talking, hyping up Ragnarok. Hey, you hear this good thing about Ragnarok? Oh, what's that about Ragnarok? I hear you. <laughs> There's a lot of that. <laughs> Where we get the Clash of the Titans world, uh, like a world ending fight. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Fimble winter's upon us, boys. The winner to end all winners. I can feel it in my throat. Yeah. It is said that when Jormungandr and Thor battle at Ragnarok, their clash so violently shakes the tree of life that it splinters, casting the serpent backward through time, even before his own birth. What? That is madness. Well, I did say not to concern yourself. So what do you think of the story of God of War? I thought it was amazing. I played this when it came out, but I played it only on Twitch. And so when you're playing on Twitch, you're like concentrating on the game, your chat, your chatting. So it's like at most you can give it like 70%. Because your attention is split, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like, don't be wrong, I fucking adored it back then. I said it was like my favorite of the God of War games without question. Probably my game of the year when it came out. And I said it's my second game of the previous generation uh the first being bloodborne i think that game's a masterpiece uh when i went back and played it a second time i liked it more um oh wow i was able to like kind of like really just listen and take in the world and take my time it's a thrill ride uh my god uh ups and downs mostly ups and that bit in the middle of the game when you go back to your house and you get your blades the music kicks in and just a slow drip of people learning who Kratos is and they slowly bring back his past and how he hasn't quite gotten away from it. I think it's masterfully done. I think it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Mm, well said, Steve. Um, so that's God of War's story. Uh, yes. So that's God of War's story done and dusted. Stick around for part two of the video where we'll go over gameplay, voice acting, writing, music, kayfabe thoughts, tips and tricks and PC ports and Easter eggs on second playthrough. See you in 30 seconds. What did you write? I asked them to watch over mother. And so... Reflect longer. Rickery, are you...
are you shaving your head? We're going on an epic adventure, Morty. What? God of War, Morty, the new one. Kratos is a dad, the kid is curious. What does shaving your head have to do with- Why do we have to do anything, Morty? I don't know, because of fear? Wrong, Morty. Money? Uh, yeah, but not this time. Love, family, I, 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 don't, I don't know. <sighs> That's good, Morty. Find your motivation. We have to make choices and, and we have to face the consequences. We're going to the Nine Realms. Oh! Welcome to side B of the OSW Deep Dive on God of War. Gameplay! Combat! I love it. Even though Kratos isn't like a super powerful god killer, he's always been fast and nimble. Half of his attacks are him twirling and spinning and jumping and, you know. But they've kept that in. Definitely doesn't move as quickly. I don't know, it still feels incredible. Like, he still feels like he's capable of taking on an army. But it feels modern, it feels heavy, it feels feels meaty. weighty, meaty. I like how they kind of moved the main buttons for combat from X and Square and Triangle, and they moved it on to the R1 and R2, which is very Dark Soulsy. R1, light attack, R2, heavy, hold it to charge it up, you it's know? very shootery, isn't it, as well, isn't it? It, it, <laughs> it is also shootery, but it works, and it feels awesome. I didn't get bored of the combat once during this game because it's so much fun. I will say, I didn't find myself marking out quite as much as I did in the older games. But, you know, I still marked out every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good shit, mate. All right. What about yourself? Yeah, man, it's just... Okay, combat here. Because I didn't think the combat in the 1-3 to three was special. But, like, major overhaul. Thanks to the new main weapon, the Leviathan Axe. His main weapon is no longer the Blades of Chaos. That's insane, you know? The axe, oh my god. Incredibly versatile. You got light attacks, heavy attacks, tap to combo, staggered attacks for different combos, contextual attacks, like after parrying or using your shield, runic attacks. But not only is it for short range, like the Blades of Chaos, you can throw it, making it more like a third-person shooter, like the camera snaps to over the shoulder when you're throwing it to help you out. Throwing the axe is also versatile. Yeah, like you hit the head of an enemy for big damage, weak spots deal massive damage, throw at the legs to trip up your opponent, upgrade attacks to hit multiple people. Well, that's not all. The axe, the Leviathan axe, is frosted like Michael Colt's frosted tips. <laughs> <laughs> it freezes things, so leading to puzzles that can be solved with it, but it's mostly freezing a cog in place. So it, Also, like it, enemies, you can whip it at an enemy and he won't move and you can go in and batter something with your fists and then if you line it up just right, you can call it back and it will kill the enemy that you threw it in, go through the enemy you've been fisting. <laughs> Excuse me. Sir. And kill both of them as you cinematically call it back in triumph. Mm. It's fucking incredible. That idea of freezing an enemy with your axe means like you've taken that enemy out of the fight so you can deal with other parts. So it's a strategic move, which is amazing. Throwing the axe sends you into a hand-to-hand -hand combat mode, which is its own thing. And, like, there's just so many like little additions to it that make it a multi-purpose weapon. Some enemies are resistant to ice, which means you have to use hand-to-hand -to, -hand to switch up your attack and you're more likely to stagger dizzy them as well. It's all very clever and well thought out. Similarly, the animation and sound design complement it perfectly. Like when you recall the axe, if it's lodged somewhere, it'll, it'll wiggle before yeah. it actually gets pulled out and the arc is returned is like elliptical so it'll show you the trajectory and when he grabs it it kind of pushes Kratos' hand back a bit just to sell the weight that's so good but not so much that it's not like a casual thing so he's yeah. you're powerful enough to wield it yeah you know? it's it's the perfect balancing act they must have spent ages doing it yeah and it's the perfect matchup for Thor whose gimmick is that he can also throw his mighty hammer and call it back at any time. It flies back and he catches it. So I'm waiting for a bit in God of War Ragnarok. I want to be fighting Thor, and then they both put up their hands and their weapons fly into their own hands at the exact same time, and they just look at each other. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me what I want. I was thinking uh, Kratos will open his arms and he'll summon me on there. Oh. <laughs> 
don't tease me, Jay. And, and he murders him. Like <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> be that's what happens, see. Nah, nothing that cool happens. <laughs> Actually, something way better happens. Delete as appropriate. <laughs> Add some cool, whooshy, clangy noises, and it's a winner. All executed perfectly. Steve, what do you think of the Blades of Chaos? Amazing. They're so different, and you get a taste for what Kratos was. This, like, spinning Deathbringer. The axe, it's very much you've got to think about what you're going to do. You can take one guy on at a time. You can free someone while you take on somebody else. You can get them from distance. But when you've got the blades... If there's three or four minions, it's fine. You're just going to take them all out at the same time because they're super powered, medium distance weapons with a wide arc of damage. Feels great. Looks great. Still one of my biggest markout moments that I can think of. The only thing I can think of in the last 10 years that made me mark out more than this was the ending to Metroid Dread. And both just filled me with fucking glee. Just marking out on my chair. <laughs> yeah, they're great. They're different. They have different combos, different setup, different feel. Just raining down pain on enemies. <laughs> it's incredible. All right. There is parrying, which is way easier. Uh, okay, so you can bunt with the shield, you can parry, and you can do a couple of moves as well. Uh, parrying, way easier. Very forgiving window. After coming from Metroid Dread, it's like, that. no problem, mate. It's super easy. In the first Baldur fight, I think I beat him with being hit like once or twice. Like I was just parrying and I know it's the name of the, of the game, but it made me feel like a god, you know? Like hmm. I'm taking everything he had, I'm throwing it back at him. It was super cool. Hmm. Exploring. God of War is the franchise where the game says go left, you go right and get the loot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before we move on away from combat, oh, yeah. you've got your little buddy. Mm, uh, your, your son who... As the game goes on, I don't know if it's true or if it just felt like it, but it felt like he got more capable. Like oh, yeah. He, he, he would take jumping on, on enemies yeah. and taking them out. Of course, you can tell him to fire his arrows. And then when you get the shock arrows and you upgrade that, it can like daisy chain enemies. So it can really help you if there's minions coming around you. And then, of course, he has his runes where he can summon. I don't know about you, but I kept to the wolves mm. and I upgraded that to the max. So by the time you finish, I think he can summon like four wolves. That daisy chain shock onto other enemies. Very powerful. I'm a big fan of uh, summoning a squirrel instead. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I actually leveled up Atreus way quicker than with Kratos. Because he's just such a powerful sidekick. Like he can pause your enemy, he can stun them. And then you can go in and start smashing it. (laughs) It's super, (laughs) super helpful. Puzzles! Pretty simple. Use the axe to hit turny fans to show the right combination and you get your prize. Yeah, nothing really jumps out, you know. God of War was never particularly heavy on the puzzles. I do remember in like either God of War 1 or 2, there was one where you had to move these massive blocks and you could put them onto this thing that could turn them so that you yeah, could put yeah, them yeah, yeah, back yeah. in place. And in all the seven games, that's the only puzzle that I really remember. Uh, like the rest of and them wasn't are, great. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's like it's you know, move this, mm, yeah, shine this, yeah, kill this. <laughs> <laughs> and this game is not much different. It's fine, you know. There's some ones where you're pulling a chain and then you'll freeze the bridge or something. Or hit and three bells. Yeah, it's all simple. It all works, but there's nothing that you'll be caught on. You know. Okay. Oh, just one last element. They've really upgraded this. The RPG skill tree. Upgrade different attacks. And I was like, don't worry. You'll be able to upgrade most of them in your first playthrough. Yeah. I mean, you're... Everything you want. Like, you're never going to get everything up to full in your first playthrough. And without grinding, you can't get to level seven. You know, like, you can't get the highest gear. But you can get to level five or six just by playing. I got to like high level five just by playing the main quest side quest you'll get the six and then if you want to grind through the misty maze Mm. uh which i most certainly don't (laughs) oh really because that is my like my only gripe is nilf niflheim i hate it 
Oh, wow. Well, because I was so angry. They're like, oh, stop be in the mist. You're going to have to go through these time the boss fights. And it's like, oh, this is grindy. I don't like it. But then I found out that actually, no, that's an optional side quest. And I'm yep. like, oh, thank God. Thank you. Yep. All right. We're back in business. Yeah. Okay. I'm very glad that we're on the same uh, That's weird. Because yeah, yeah. in general, I don't like grinding in games as a whole. Mm. The role playing side of this game is my least favorite part of it. I don't like numbers in game. Like, if I'm going to play a role-playing game, that's fine. You can give me all the numbers. But I don't like the mixing and matching and melding of genres. God of War is an action game. In the old ones, you would get souls by killing things and you could level up by putting souls in. That's fine. But I don't like number gating. Like, if you travel too far to the left... And the minions on this side of the bridge are level three and you kill them. And the minions on this side of the bridge are level seven and they kill yeah. and they kill you in one hit. That to me is not fun. And I don't want to spend two hours grinding mist to level up. So um, yeah, uh, it's my least favorite part of the game. However, it doesn't negatively impact my thoughts on it because it's all optional. It's all extra. If you want to do it, fucking great. But it's not mandatory to play this game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I assume we have you to thank for freeing us from a watery grave. Us? Other spirits. The Lake of Nine is full of them. Side quests! Do you have any favourite side quests? I like the dragon stuff. I do like how it's not combat based. It's puzzle based because like I was just saying earlier, I kind of missed some of the puzzles. So the fact that they're gated off and you do them in the side quests is a bit meh, but they're really fun and they're spectacular and there's dragons and I want to kill all those dragons in the next <laughs> game. I like the way you help them out, but they just like roar and fly off yeah. like a bollocks. Yeah. Come on, mate. I really like uh, Whetstone. You're looking for a fancy Whetstone and come across a Reaver Soul. He was slain by his son. So you can see how this relates to Kratos. Your thing is you have to go find out where the son is and you find out that he was uh, oh, is, is mut that mutinied. Knives him in the back, is it? Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And he was mutinied and his men didn't take to him and they killed him. And, and so you go back to Reaver and you tell him. It was like, okay, you're dead. So, you know, that's not great. But of all the places to die and spend eternity haunting, it's pretty perfect. You know, like open air, waterfall, beautiful, bright, sunny day, bit of shelter. <laughs> he killed his own father? Ooh, the sea captain. This is the unfinished business side quest where the gimmick is that Kratos, he's so respectful of his dedication to his men because he doesn't want to be saved himself. He's just racked with guilt about the death of his men. And this is a good learning lesson for Atreus. Yeah, loyalty. This man inspired loyalty. He took responsibility for his mistakes and he was determined to fix them. These are good lessons for you. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Anatomy of Hope, where a man asks you, can you get the bones to resurrect my dead wife? Bring me Gulveg's bones. <laughs> and he said, man, she's really powerful. She can help you and bring back your dead wife. What do you think about that? I just want to know if she's okay. She is dead, boy. I know that. I. You don't understand. Neither do you. By the end of it, you have to collect a couple of different sets of bones because they're strewn yeah. around different islands. Yeah, and it's just like three sets yeah. of bones or something. And it's like, well, nothing... The reason why they're strewn about is intentional. No good person gets their bones scattered in that order. This is to keep them apart, you know? And even before you go give them back to him, uh, he's like, okay, I know she's not coming back. I know this is... But, you know, let's just do it anyway. Let's just do it. Oh, yeah. Nothing can possibly go wrong, mm. you know? Like, he's still got the hope and the positivity and the optimism. You know, he's not world beaten yet. You do, you give it to them, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna reunite you with your dead wife. In hell! <laughs> <laughs> and a witchy comes out and you gotta go beat her. And then afterwards, Atreus is like, go on, say say I told you so. You know, say it. And he's like, yeah, I told you so. 
And uh, Atreus just gives him a bit of shade as well. He was like, oh, your, your foolishness is the end of you. <laughs> like, oh, that's good, mate. All right. Say it. I told you so. I told you so. You are naive, foolish boy. This is true as well. But do not take your disappointment out on me, boy. Take it as a lesson. Yes, sir. Valkyrie battles. How'd you get on? I just killed one. It's the first one that you face in the caves just after Freya's house. Mm, okay. um, you unlock that. You go down. It's not a terribly difficult battle, you know? Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is, is that they're so overpowered that it takes you a few minutes to whittle down their health, but they can kill you in two or three hits. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's why you're you're literally meant to save them until the very end, until you have the best mm. armor, fully upgraded your weapons, and it's like, I, I don't want to do that. The time sink to get there will not be worth what I get from doing it, you know? But if you kill them all, then you'll be able to get a legally distinct gauntlet, like infinity stones. <laughs> uh, so it's a kind of a marble thing. That is pretty awesome, to be fair. Scar- gauntlet. Yeah, agreed, same as myself. It wouldn't be level eight taking them on. So realistically, yeah, it's, it's a post-game endeavor. Thank you, friends. You have saved the Valkyrie. Writing. Oh man, I just I'm so glad the writers are comfortable with a degree of levity and fleshing out these characters, giving them depth by showing these kind of gruff beings having moments of tenderness and warmth. So it's just not all the rah rah, I hate you, I'm gonna kill you, you know, that kind of character. Yeah. The waffer thin ones. <laughs> Uh, it's not straight up jokey, but there's banter and sarcasm, uh, making them all feel more believable and lovable. And it's kind of you're in the trenches together. You kind of that's how you cope with it as well. So difficult to get the degree of levity right. They fucking nailed it. The dialogue and the delivery. Like for the majority of the game, you're the trio of Kratos, Atreus, and Mimir, and they each bring something to the table. Like Mimir's sharp wit and otherworldly knowledge and tales, Kratos is a stern father, staying his temper, and Atreus, wide eyed positivity, sensitivity, and thirst for knowledge. This is my favorite Mimir line. When you kill the ice giant's heart and you're bringing it back to the witch, Kratos is talking to Mimir and. I, I just won't tell Atreus of his true form and it'll be grand. And then Mimir's like, bollocks. Respectfully, brother, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> you must say nothing to the boy. He must never know. Bollocks, brother. Respectfully, bollocks. It's great stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I love how we've seen God of War grow up. When this series first came out, he's the Kevin the teenager you know? <laughs> oh god you know and like then he turns into the like self-hating goth teenager and then the cocky teenager and now he's the like don't want to say doting dad but he's grown up he's not the same character that he was yeah you know, he's he's the same person but you know he's different he's changed he's grown up a bit and the game feels like that as well hmm funniest uh mimir line is like just the bottom one here the ghost of sparta uh, Scottish accent the ghost of Sparta <laughs> eh from what I hear the Pantheon had it coming <laughs> yeah that's brilliant <laughs> that's <so> good <laughs> so is this the new gimmick of getting me to do one accent at least yes. every episode yes oh, no, don't mistake me brother from what I have the Pantheon had it coming there's numerous callbacks to previous titles but I like you don't need to have played them because the emotional implications are clear you don't need to know how Kratos killed Zeus his dad but that he did it and that and it haunts him yeah yeah that bad gods exist and it's how Kratos and his son react and talk it out that matters the game is replete with these wonderful character building moments too the story is how Kratos will teach Atreus how to be a god and his son will teach him how to be human Oh, very good. The writing is layered and contextual, weaving plot lines deftly so that Atreus and we are learning and growing as we progress. There's a running gimmick of Kratos kind of 
feeling the wounds that never heal, like reminders of his inescapable past. Like he'll just stop and like close his eyes and go, and he can feel the turmoil and torment. Yeah. You know? Which is also him trying to quell the rage as well. I was just kind of waiting for the like Homer Simpson neck lumps to like, <laughs> <laughs> just to pop out on him, you know? <laughs> oh, brilliant. Kangaroosies, roosies. <laughs> There's an overarching theme of predestination, a fate that is already determined, and dealing with that. Kratos comes from a line of patricide with Zeus and Kronos. He must break the cycle. On both a life and a personal journey, he's trying to break his life of hate-filled violence and vengeance to be a good father and a good man. Mm. But there's a point at the end of the game where he says that he would let the cycle happen again if it was to do his son good. So he would willingly die for his son, Mm. which is not the same cycle, but it is the same cycle. It would still be the son killing the father. Yeah. But he was going to kill her. She would have died to see him live. Only a parrot can understand. So you'd let me kill you? If it meant you would live. Yes. Every secondary character is in service of Kratos and Atreus' relationship. They show fractured familial ties and represents how their own could turn out. Like Brock and Sindri start out as two estranged brothers who broke the sigil and practice separately. And it's not till they get together that they're able to, everyone has the super happy ending. Yeah. You know. Magni and Modi are cruel gods, both competitive and insecure, belittled by their tyrant father Thor. Even Tyr and Odin are flip sides of the coin showing the lads what type of gods they could become. Reviled oppressor Odin, obsessively hoarding knowledge, whose callousness knew no bounds. Or like Tyr, beloved and trusted, who shared his knowledge with the world and in return was showered with offerings whose benevolence gained the trust of the giants. And then there's the big one, Balder and Freya. So just like special attention to Balder because like he's the top heel of the game. Thor and Odin aren't around. We talk them up a lot. You know, know, they're not around. Which is weird because Balder in the Norse mythos was beloved. He was so beautiful that people fell in love with him and he was charming and nice. And bottom flowers. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So what they've turned him into is really cool to see as well. Mm. So he's the primary antagonist in the game, billed as an indestructible god with no weaknesses. Helheim, the realm of the damned, has an incredible gimmick of tormenting souls that were there, showing them their most ashamed and damaging moments to break their spirits. Uh, Well, even more so. We see it as Atreus witnesses a spectre of Kratos killing his father Zeus. Uh, He took it remarkably well. (laughs) And in a phenomenal, unexpected bonus, when your second proper fight with Balder ends up in Helheim, he must relive his, too. I can't taste. I can't smell. I can't even feel the temperature of this this room. His mother, Freya, didn't want him to come to harm, so placed an invincibility spell on him. However, this also meant that he cannot feel, taste, or enjoy women. He cannot enjoy anything. So, despite being practically immortal, he is robbed of living. He loads his mother, strangles her, but releases her and leaves. Crumpling down, filled with self-loathing, Balder sobs to himself. I'm a coward. I'm a worthless coward. Balder's greatest regret was his final act of love, sparing his mother. It's beautifully tragic, but has twisted it into unquenchable hate and vengeance. Freya's created this monster. She's the bad person here. This invincibility spell isn't about protecting Balder. It's about protecting herself. She heard of a prophecy that he would die, so she couldn't take the pain of losing him, so took away his choice, his ability to feel. This was the selfish choice. Damning her, she could have released Balder from the curse that she plays on him. She knew what those mistletoe arrows could do, and didn't hesitate to destroy them and covered it up. It was his fight and his death by Kratos that set him free. He was so happy he was able to feel and his last word was a comforting snow. What you did to me. I think the snow was also a reference to Ragnarok because don't they say that the world is going to be covered in frost and snow? Yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of the signs that the world's gone to shit. <laughs> the world has gone to shit. Mm. 
Yeah, the parallels between Kratos and his son versus Freya and hers, like keeping secrets and lies created an irreparable rift and created a monster, a vengeful god in Baldur. But by trusting and teaching Atreus, telling him the truth and allowing him to come to his own conclusions, he did to become better than the gods. A wonderful teaching moment there. It all feeds into it. It oh, really does. It's all like mirror images, different parts of the relationship shown through other people's relationships. Incredible. Like the writers do not get the credit they deserve. They absolutely smashed it. Like if it wasn't up to snuff, the whole game would collapse and be slagged off. Like just congratulations to God of War writers Matt Sophos, Richard Zangrad Gobert and Corey Barlog. This weapon, any weapon, comes from here. But only when tempered by this, by the discipline, the self-control of the one who wields it. That is where the true strength of a warrior lies. You must never forget that. Good then. Voice acting. Kratos, played by Christopher Judge, most widely known as Tilk in Stargate SG-1. And he also did some voices in StarCraft 2. He's the main event. There's actually a little Easter egg where they get Kratos to go, indeed. (laughs) Which is his gimmick in Stargate. I love it. I can see why mom wanted us to bring her here. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, what do you think of Christopher Judge? He was everything that the character needed. Kratos is never going to be some, you know, uh, wide-ranged character, you know? Like, he doesn't have crazy ups and downs. His affect rarely changes. I mean, he did an absolutely perfect job. Like, he didn't overact. He went out there, did exactly what the character needed, did it justice, and yeah. I couldn't picture another human doing a better job. So, yeah, he voice acted and mo capped it. Like, he's a giant guy. See his jaw, holy shit, you know? It's a weird one because he's not going to get the praise that some other characters would get because they can be quite difficult. You know, like, if you have to cry on cue or if you're doing some, like, really difficult scene where, you you know, you have to lose your shit or you have to act if you have some mental health issues, you know, like, they're all really difficult roles to play. But he did what he had to do perfectly. Yeah, oh, he does a masterful job. Your favourite scene there, is a, it's a best scene in it, where he finds the Blades of Chaos and Athena, the spectre, is running them down and says, you'll always be a monster. And he replies, I know. They actually, in the documentary, they show you him mocapping the scene and he actually sheds a tear. Oh. You will always be a monster. I know. It was like in his mocap suit with the sticky balls. Like, <laughs> like fuck, he's in it, you know? He, he's, he's acting. Mm. Atreus, played by uh, Sonny Suljic, who did Killing of a Sacred Deer and went on to star in Jonah Hill's film Mid 90s. I'm a god. Do you like him? Yeah, he was good. I mean, for most of the game, he was just a kid. He's acting... He's not just a kid. He's a demi-demi-god, you know? But it's not until he finds out that he's a god that he really kind of gets to show his acting chops. And he turns into the, like, bratty, snotty, godly being who's looking down on everybody else. Great stuff. Obviously, you know, it's not the same depth of character as some of the other roles. Obviously, he's, he's a lot younger as well. It's more difficult to like do it but yeah great stuff Mm. you did well thanks the boy just having a little fun you big grump Mimir played by Alistair Duncan Uh, I think we already mentioned him already Brock is played by Robert Craighead a wonderful gruff curmudgeon more comical version of Kratos I thought yeah pretty much favourite bit is seeing Brock he it's just when your kid is sick he asks oh where's the little shit but when you say he's fallen ill he offers to suit up and come with you. That's awesome. So right there, you get the true feeling there, you know. He's teeming and amazing with his gruff quips as well, you know. It's probably due to all that nunya. (laughs) No. (laughs) Fuck. 
I gotta splice it anyway. How do you build a piece of armor out of something so... So... Nanya. Nanya? Nanya fucking business. Sindri played by Adam Harrington, a light-footed fancy boy. My favourite bit is him explaining he can pass by undetected using an apple as a prop. And he kind of yes. works around you as well. Uh, it's wonderful. It's cool. Yeah. I love Sindri. He's one of my favourite characters in the game. I just thought he lightens every scene that he's in. Very, very endearing. And I mentioned earlier that I love how he carries the axe as well. I just think it's like, it's, it's, it's like cute, you know? Hmm. And he, like, we're not in a serious moment, so a bit of levity is appreciated. That I'm pretentious. No. And I'm tight. Fussy. I know what he thinks, but he can't hurt me any- ah! Freya by Danielle Biscuti. Uh, she was in Curse of Chucky and Insidious Chapter 2. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know if she feuded with Rick Steiner. I, I couldn't find that. These arrows are dangerous. They're wicked. You find any more, you destroy them, understand? Do you understand? Say it! I understand. If I see them, I'll destroy them. It's all I ask. Forgive me. The Stranger, Jeremy Davies, Balder. He was uh, Malcolm in Sleepy Hollow. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and here I thought my family was fucked up. I think Baller was great. I think Freya smashed it. I think she did a fucking phenomenal job. I think in terms of acting chops, she did the best of all the people that were in. She got the show range. And I felt her panic of losing her child. Yeah, she did a fucking phenomenal job. Oh man, the actress there, Danielle, she was just saying when I was acting in this role, I had just recently got divorced. And so I was able to pull from these emotions and inject them into the character. You carry a lot of uh, baggage, your weight of emotions around which and you can kind of pick them up and use that in the role. Like, she yeah. 100% did it. Like, it, it totally worked. Hmm. Passing on your cruelty and rage, you will never change. And you do not know me. I know enough. Steve, God of War's accessibility. God of War's accessibility is nothing huge. Customizable controls, speaker indicators for subtitles, skip quick time events, but kind of lacking. So much so that they've hired accessibility consultants to kit out Ragnarok much better. Oh, okay. But, hey, it's in a variety of different languages. Ooh, let's go with room. <laughs> Peu importe ce que tu cherches, je ne l'ai pas. Padre, ayúdame! Resiste! Rápido! Me resbalo! I o swojej? To nie twoja sprawa! Bogowie tych światów nie przepadają za obcymi, zaufaj mi. Wiem. music it's weird like i don't have much to say i feel like it's very much background until you get that kind of godly swell when something big is happening the oh, you know so you only really remember the main theme yeah i don't really remember anything else mm. yeah yeah and I, that's yeah. not to say it's better or anything you know but maybe it fit the mood as opposed to got in my brain mm. Uh, yeah, God of War needed people that can read Nordic runes and sing and pronounce it correctly, so they get an Icelandic choir. The soundtrack is by Bear McCreary, who worked on the famous uh, angry video game nerd movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's mostly just dramatic scoring to go along with what the lads are saying, but it's all in service of them. It, it's only a few bits where it pokes its head out. But here's a few of my favourites. We're going to Jodenheim, right? Look, they have sand bowls in Alfheim too. Yeah, Mom said he's friendly. What does it say? I don't know. P. 
PC port slash playing kind of second time around multiple playthroughs. Just things you might notice. Foreshadowing Atreus's real name. Loki, right from the get-go, if you look inside your gaff, you take a camera, you can find runes that spell out L-O-K-I. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Of course, Atreus's sash, part of it was from Kratos's old gear that he was wearing, because it has the same design. Nice. That's pretty cool. Probably know that anyway. Atreus, being told he's a god, he takes it quite well, you know? The first thing he says is, can I turn into an animal? And Loki transmorphs into animals. Yeah. And his runic attacks are animals, too. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's great. <laughs> McGregor came knocking on your door and says, I thought you'd be taller. He's expecting a giant because he was looking for your wife, Faye, who is a giant. But he'd only have heard about her. He wouldn't have met her. You know? Yeah. Also, when you fight him, there's a tapestry depicting your journey right in front of you. It's just a bit of it scuffed, oh. but it's, it's right there. The witch Freya's tattoos are more pronounced at the end of the game. With her fingers are covered and they look incredible. Yeah, yeah, because of her use of magic. So she wouldn't have used it in ages at the start of the game, but she's been using it more and more. So originally it was faded and now it's all in full view. Yeah, and as she's actually casting magic, so her, her fingertips, like I'd say half of her fingers, are covered in like a deep blue. But as she's casting, they turn into like a golden yellow. Mm. It's really cool looking. Very nice. Okay, do you know when you're leaving Tyr's secret room with their quest nearly completed, they share a drink? Atreus is like, oh, it smells like rotten eggs. If you look at that scene, but remove Kratos' beard after they drink, he cracks a smile. Uh. Yeah, yeah, it's like the only time in the game. The PC port, it's superb, highly optimized. Sony put a lot of effort into this release. Runs ultra wide out of the box. Even the cutscenes has DLSS if you're big into ray tracing. Digital Foundry have a half hour breakdown vid on it if it interests you. And it's a 70 gig download, which is pretty good, actually. It's not bad. Like the PS5 version is like 60 gigs or something. So it's about right. Mm, did a great job with it. Oh, do you have any kind of improvements that you'd have on the game? I mean, nothing in terms of a mechanical improvement that I'd check. Most of the things would be things going forward that I'd like them to write. I'd say my biggest issue with the game overall would be the boss fights. Hmm. God of War is uh, is like one of its key factors is its awesome, incredible boss fights. And this game has a few, but it has too few. And I feel like they padded it out with, uh, hey, you're going to fight the fire troll, and then you're going to fight the ice troll, and then you're going to fight the fire and the <laughs> ice troll. The only troll fight that I really enjoyed was the one in hell, because he felt like a, a fleshed out boss with a different moveset. He didn't feel like a palette swap. So more boss types, more boss fights, and less palette swaps. Okay. Yeah, like for me, yeah, slim pickings, you know. I'd like a button to jump down. Yes. Do you mean when he kicked, kicked yeah. the chain? Yeah, and you have to go to <sighs> row one by one. Yeah, yeah. But not only that, every time you kick a chain, he will climb down. Yeah, yeah, automatically. Even, even if you don't want to go down. Mm. If you just want to kick the fucking chain down for later, then you have to climb back up. Like, I've seen him survive big drops. He he can jump down, you know? There is a cool bit where he's surfing on a shield that did like that. How very um, Legolas of you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, play as Atreus. Uh, like even for a section or two like Ashley and Resi 4 you know I think they're gonna build to that in yeah. Ragnarok and yeah you can do it in Ragnarok yeah. and I think it's gonna be an amazing moment yeah hmm. and I would like a few more cosmetic unlockables after you beat the game like having different facial hair and skin colour and that kind of thing okay you know? okay Steve, my favorite part of it. Kayfabe thoughts and musings <laughs> going through the game. Go on. I wonder if enemies 
know how important they are. Like, do you think when they're dead, they're like, oh, he didn't even use his runic attack on me. (laughs) (laughs) You're kind of scary sometimes. Okay, so you're in a boat. You pass through Thor's statue's legs. Does that mean you guys have done it? A little bit? Yeah. (laughs) God of War's language, like, I was like, it... It's it's a codex, not a language. Codex is one symbol, is one letter. Like, language is different words and syntax together. But they're Nordic runes, like Elder Futark. And it, it's just something when they released a demo before the game was out, it was a bit in the witch's gaff where they're having a chat. And on her necklace, it actually spells out Balder in runes. And so if you... Knew. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you knew to spot it, you, that's a big spoiler, you know. But nobody saw it, and Cory Barlog was happy. Oh, just like, you know, you're haunted by Athena in, you know, critical moments in the game. And he's, you know, get out of my head. I was like, well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This is a cinematic game with no cutscenes, but they do have doors that take a while to get through. And plenty of gates so they can kind of stop rendering that part of the game. Like, they just close it off behind you. And you use the Bifrost to go to the different realms. It's like, well, we enter the realm of loading. <laughs> we have to walk for 30 seconds. By the way, the Blades of Chaos, you know, an amazing scene when you unearth them. They're rusty. What the fuck, man? Like, clean your weapons before you put them away. No? He doesn't give a fuck, does he? Ah, no. Like, do you not wash your dishes before you put them in the press? Do you just put them in there? I mean, if I use my chicken, you know, if I use my dishes to kill the the god of cows, (laughs) (laughs) I might not, you know. Do you know those big, massive soldiers, the travelers, the undead soldiers that are way more difficult to beat? Yeah, yeah, the armored dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, travelers means something very different in Ireland. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think that they could be like English soldiers and that they brought back after they went to see new parts of the world? Like, um, who's your man in Game of Thrones? The, the mountain? Yeah. Kind of like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Because you are a traveller of the realms. You are a chosen traveller. I'm not a traveller. Two more things here. When the dwarf lads become friends again, they consider Mega Power's handshake, but they don't. <laughs> like, oh, ooh. <laughs> and I did feel a bit bad for Mimir, who goes on adventures, but is facing the camera. He's facing not the direction of Kratos. Yeah. You know? Is he all seeing with his crazy eyes, though? I hope so, you know? Yeah. Could you not just wear him on the front of your belt? You know? Or as as a codpiece? (laughs) Book it. Easter eggs. I've actually scattered most of my favourites through the re- review already. But um, Atreus has tattoos, but they're in Nordic ruins. It says, fast hand, and on his neck it's sharp mind. Ah. Hmm. There's a Marvel shout out where after you beat a troll, Atreus goes, puny troll. Yes. <laughs> As opposed to Incredible Hulk's. Puny god. Puny troll. And there's the Infinity Gauntlet type reference, needing multiple gems. Oh, uh, there is God of War totems in Horizon Forbidden West. Ooh. Yeah, there's Kratos, Atreus, Brock, and Sindri. That's awesome. Oh, very cool. Looks like some kind of war god. Oh, Kratos' axe holster is an Omega. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Like the logo in God of War. Uh, Omega is the symbol of war in Greece. Ah, and it's also the end, you know? Ah. Uh, I love how Kratos explains doing side quests with an in-universe explanation. It'll help with your training. Yeah, yeah, your overall journey in that. Just one of the puzzles here, to get the chest, you have to open the portcullis. But, like, in the world, I can see around it. Like, just, you know, one foot <laughs> climb on the rocks there. Just walk around. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing the puzzle, Dick. Anyway. Oh, after clocking Metroid Dread, I found parrying and timing in God of War is a cinch. 
just use your shield to reflect projectiles back at them and it's just, just blammo bl- no problem mate blam <laughs> I was like oh yeah yeah it's definitely generous mm. but not so much so that it makes it feel easy it just gets it right that it makes you feel like a badass yes and finally Pearl Harbor from the front. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just wanted to shout out the jump scare that totally got me when you're opening a chest and you just get Pearl Harbor from the front by a baddie. He comes out of the chest and you have a fight. Son of a bitch. It's kind of like one of my favorite bits in The Last of Us 2. It killed me that we didn't mention it uh, during our deep dive. When you're at the workbench in, you know, an apartment building and you're going to upgrade your stuff, it's like, oh, you know, yeah. relax, this is my safe space, it's nice and calm, and I can kind of work on improving my stats or whatever. And then just somebody grabs you and pulls you back, and you get Pearl Harbor and into a gunfight. Dickheads, yeah. And it's so well done. And the fact that it's only done once, it means that it never gets old. And so that moment you will carry with you. And it also keeps you on edge that they might do it one or two times, but they don't. So it's that's really clever. I, I was really annoyed at them because they've just taken away my relaxing moment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Jesus. Mods. Nothing huge, you know? That's because you don't play as a female character. <laughs> 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 I mean, have you seen the Resident Evil 2 and 3 mods? Mm, very much there? so. Holy fuck. Bouncy, bouncy. When you click on the comments and the top comment is the uh, people have time stamped the bits where the female <laughs> characters <laughs> crawl through things. <laughs> So mods that you can see, uh, FOV change, which are unneeded for me, like yeah. zooming out makes it look more like an open world game and it's not as nice looking. You can play, you know, God mode or uh, invisible armor, which is cool. So you can see more of them. Okay. There is a mod to play as Atreus, which Specializer is working on. At the moment, he kind of just like skates everywhere to cover the ground. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious, but it's good stuff. The cosmetics aren't anything huge, like a younger Kratos with his schmig. But it's weird having young Kratos think and talk like old Kratos, yeah. you know? You can get a Darth Maul flavored skin. But a cooler mod is for Resident Evil 3 Remake, where you can change Nemesis to Kratos. Oh, yeah. That's way more terrifying. Yeah, and have him stock Jill or Lady D. Why not? <laughs> And he's like, ah, b- <laughs> <laughs> Turns out we just needed to give modders a little more time. Revisiting this a few months later, a slew of cool skins were developed. Like Dad and Boy being replaced by Joel and Ellie from The Last of Us. Oh, it's amazing. Or instead of the Leviathan Axe, Kratos wields Thor's hammer. Ah, oh, that's bad as baby. Because it has all the little sparks and stuff. It looks awesome. Here's Dad and Boy with Rick and Morty models. Ooh, get swifty. Master Chief versus Doom Guy. Master Chief is a few inches taller in the suit, so that's pretty accurate. That is kind of cool, actually, isn't it? Hmm. But best of all, the Simpsons mod. <laughs> <laughs> so, Homer is Kratos. Yes. And then Ned Flanders comes <laughs> knocking on your door. <laughs> and he even has some dialogue spliced in and new dialogue with voice actors. That's so incredible. Oh, congrats. Like, oh, is that Omega Fantasy did it? Amazing. Sublime, cromulent work from <laughs> Omega Fantasy with voice acting by Benjamin and June. Can a duff beer to y'all? What do you want, stupid Flanders? Time to repent your sins. Oh, have we mentioned Kratos' body was modeled after uh, your man who was in Crime Time who passed away? Shad Gaspar. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. He he was the body model wow. for Kratos. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. Rest oh, in peace, so eh? Lovely. Yeah, all right, P, mate. Uh, Shad Gaspard, uh, he's an ex WWE wrestler and actor. He died in May 2020. He and his son were swimming in a sea and they encountered a deadly riptide. His last words before being pulled under was shouting to the lifeguard, save my son, save my son, which he did. 
uh, Shad died a hero and was honoured at the 2022 WWE Hall of Fame. Got any uh, tips for first-time players? Because it's something that I didn't enjoy first time around, I'd say don't worry about leveling up yeah, and yeah. the numbers. Mm-hmm. Just play the game. You will level up enough to beat it as you go along. And if you want to get to level 7 and fully max out things, then you can do that post-game, you know? Okay. I just have more things that I got stymied with, if you get me. Like, when you first get use of the Mystic Gateways, you can only travel back to the shop. And you'll come across loads of these fast travel points. Initially, it's just back to the shop, but it'll open up as the story progresses. Yeah. You know, so don't worry about that. Combos, uh, when you're getting into fights, just have an idea what you'll do for ranged and close combat. Like, depending on the perceived difficulty, I'd start by trying to get your runic attack in, or Atreus's runic as well, so they can kind of charge up again as you're fighting. And your rage attacks, although I never got that to fill up during a fight as well. Do you get that? No? Oh, maybe once or twice? It's pretty rare to get to use it twice. Like, I think you've got to be, like, a master of parrying and things like that. Yeah. So if you use Atreus's uh, squirrel summons, he'll find some uh, <laughs> health for the rage attack. Yeah. Eh? Oh, speaking of finding health, mm. uh, you could level up boy's gear, and I always went for the one that would find health, so that if you were doing low, he'd be like, hey, have some health, dad. Yeah. And I found that very, very helpful over, you know, extra arrows or faster regen, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. Because right. I'd yeah, recommend maxing out Atreus as his arrows stun and shock bodies so you can just run in and smash them it's amazing just a small thing but when you're upgrading weapons make sure you're upgrading the armor that you're wearing and not like armor that you just have in your equipment in your inventory because I, I started doing that it's like oh, i don't care oh uh, shit but if you just put gems in them you can take the gems out that's fine just as soon as you get use of the boat do a little circuit of the lake picking up all the shiny droplets because they're worth like plus two permanent upgrades to different stats like, just have a little go around on the on the boat when the boot comes in. In the boot. But Aquaman, you cannot marry a woman without gills. You're from two different worlds. Okay, Steve. Here we go. Here's the big one, the main event here. The God of War comic. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Dark Horse Comics by Chris Robertson, Tony Parker, and Ian Gist. A game that God of War mini comic series of World is much worse written. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the plot that's spread over four comics is the man has gone out before Kratos woke. He goes out for a daily challenge, mindful to never let his rage control him. Comes across a man getting mauled by a bear. He dispatches the bear, but two lads come to his gaff, speaking in a tongue he can't understand. Ah, he's killed their brother, who's the bear, and fights and defeats them too. A fourth lad, Hogan finger points at him, in a language he doesn't understand, but Kratos has to pursue him and bring Atreus with him. Like if the bodies know where he lives, then it's not safe for Atreus. The safest place is at his side. They come across a witchy woman who will tell them where the last villain lays in exchange for a favour yet to come. He initially just tries to stealthily destroy the bear totem, the source of their shape-shifting powers, but they wake up and they brawl around ringside. The action is way less impressive in comic book form, like after experiencing the incredible game with its cinematic set pieces, but my favourite panel is Comic 4 where Kratos shouts, UNT! <laughs> it's like, ah, that's very close. My favourite panel is when two hands are on the blade of an axe. You can see it here. Kratos burns down their gaff with the totem inside, leaving them prone to a good murdering. He makes his way back to Witchy and the Boy, but oh no, Crazy Man gets there beforehand. Kratos arrives just in the nick of time to crack your man's neck, but Witchy is done for, says he must conquer himself, and the lads create a funeral pyre for her. Much like he does with the wife. Kratos vows that he will not pass this down to the boy. The end. Okay. Sounds quite missable. Yeah, it was like, it's fine, but it's way worse than the game, so don't yeah. bother. It doesn't sound like it adds anything to it. You know, if you want more of, oh, you know, of the world, sure, jump in, grab it. 
Don't though. Don't think I'll be reading yeah. it though. It does it you didn't sell me on it. Alright. Well, cause well, that's as good as it's gonna get, because I've made that sound way way better than it is. Oh god. <laughs> I would recommend have a look at the art book instead. It's it's gorgeous. You get to kind of see all the backstage stuff, concept art and that kind of thing and what they were going for. It's way nicer. Swerve! Here comes a new challenger! The best for last. B is for boy. A book for boys and girls. Retelling Kratos' story and learn your ABCs at the same time. Wow. Oh, yeah, you know this... <laughs> <laughs> this uh, tale of God murdering and ripping beings in, in half. Very, very suitable for children. <laughs> yeah. Well, it says it's for kids, but it is not suitable for children. <laughs> there's some bad language in it, like calling the gods bastards, Atreus, don't be a dick. And there's some violent visuals, uh, like it's a joke book for adults. Okay. Officially licensed by Insight Editions and Santa Monica Studios, witty writing by Andrea Robinson, gorgeous Disney storybook-esque artwork by Romina Tempest, same artist who drew Santa Monica Studios' Christmas card, which you can see here. Mm. Nice. It looks very, very nice, I have to say. Mm. Stranger uh, has the Leviathan Axe as a present. Ah. Lovely sleigh snow ride down a mountain. Uh, Favourite bit is the final page where, except for why is for you, who makes me better, and has on this journey with every letter. Aww. And Boy responds, So your dad was Z for Zeus? That's convenient. Ooh. That's clever. That's clever. Uh, I like that uh, little tie-in. If you're in the very narrow band of people that might be interested and of appropriate age, (laughs) pick it up. You know, it's super cute. And the Game Award goes to... Read it, boy. How was it received? Oh. Eh, it was all right, <laughs> you know. Uh, unanimous applause. Over three million sold in three days. And over 20 million now with the PC release. Wow. That's like you're getting into Nintendo yeah. numbers at that point, yeah. aren't you? Steve, crazy stat. 20 million is more than every other God of War game combined. Insane. 94 on Metacritic. 82 on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that's for an unrelated film from 2017. (laughs) (laughs) Game of the Year and Best Direction at the Game Awards. Nine Dice Awards and five wins at the British Academy Game Awards. The nicest part is on the PS4 documentary, seeing Corey Barlog check the internet the day reviews dropped back in 2018. And it just stays on his face. It just wells up in happiness. Deep down, he must have known, but it's also, you never know. You know, like... The internet's the Wild West, so you never know which way the wind is going to blow. So uh, seeing the fruits of your five years of labor come in and people adore it must be a pretty good fucking feeling. Mm, Because it's like, I hope people love it. Or if people hate it, the worst it can be if if they're indifferent, you know, Yeah. what is going on. So even though it's, you're, you're pretty sure you made a great game, it's a gamble. And it's been five years of other people's money and people's labor of love. You yeah. hope you didn't shit the bed at one point, you know? Yeah. But, like, it all came back in spades. Just unanimous approval. Amazing. What documentary? Raising Kratos. A year after launch, PlayStation released an almost two-hour documentary on the making of. Highly recommend. Shows Corey insecure and worried, extremely humble and hopeful. We don't get much of Corey putting the foot down, like, when shit hits the fan and loads of bugs mounting up, that kind of thing. Like, even him stressing out, he's quite calm and aloof. He kind of just wanders about. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> Side note, project managers were asked about their second family. What do you think of your work colleagues? Because you'd spend more time at work than you would with your real families. And I expected a big wank session about, you know, the kind of nasty, like American media promoting, you know, hate your family. Your real family is, in, is at work. So never leave work because they're your real family. And, you, you know, you get that in a couple of TV shows and that. They answer it with, uh, you kind of look at each other and they fucking death stare at each other. It's like, I don't want to answer that right now. Because I 
can't fucking stand you is what you're saying you know i'm a bit raw yeah yeah they're done and they want it to be over you know which, which i like you, that yeah it's real yeah yeah very much appreciated that the documentary has a section on the team sacrificing and missing their family but ultimately their understanding as they're creating something beautiful something special best thing about it my man cory uses plex <laughs> get in kindred spirits <laughs> YouTube, God of War 2018 vids, we recommend you have a watch after this one. Raising Kratos, which I talked about just in the last segment there. Untangling God of War by Good Blood, just a fantastic video delving into comparing the legends of old and how it was retold for this game. Really high production value, so beautifully made. This legend starts in a poem called Voluspa in the Poetic Edda, is fleshed out more in Baldur's Dreams, and given even more detail in the prose editors The Death of Boulder. Mark Brown of Game Maker's Toolkit marks out about Kratos' new weapon in Forging God of War's Leviathan Axe, and what makes it so satisfying through being incredibly versatile. Highly recommend you check him out anyway, because he does boss keys where he goes through and breaks down all of Zelda's dungeons. Incredible. Because whether you're ramming it into an enemy's prefrontal cortex or catching it after a lightning-fast recall, the axe feels heavy, hefty, and brutally efficient. Omega Fantasy does a whopper job showcasing new mods for God of War. Like, check this out, uh, Kratos modded into Thanos! Oh, I'm pretty sure I do. Specklizer does an amazing job with mods too, just want to shout that out, but has a great out of bounds request series. Like when Atreus kills Modi and he's hoofed off the edge, the model just stays right there, just out of shot. Or when Atreus calls the world serpent, aww, in for the hot tag, at the end, his eyes glow. This stuff fascinates me, uh, like how game devs coded certain cutscenes, like when you're beheading Mimir cleaving his bonds from his body, there's two heads on screen for who weave it. <laughs> or when Kratos is putting on the chains of the Blades of Chaos, uh, to save on the difficulty animating it, the chains are slightly off screen, but if you look in third person, they're just fading in as needed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, any recommendations, Steve? Uh, earlier on today, I actually watched this uh, guy on YouTube, I think his name is like Dante Ravioli or something. He plays difficult games and he sets himself tasks. Can I beat God of War with only using the boy? Oh. By the way, I think that might be the first time we called him boy. Mm -hmm. We literally didn't do the meme. Yeah. Anyway, great fucking video. He was playing it on the hardest and he just said like it was just boring. It would take like half an hour to kill a boss. Mm. So he dropped it down to easy and he would just run and block with Kratos and he would kill enemies with boy. Mm. Uh, and it was great. Mm. Okay. In fact, during the entire battle, he didn't even hit me once. Funnily enough, halfway through the fight, the troll completely forgot about me and put all of his effort into squishing my son since he was clearly the problem. And finally, thanks so much to Ian for the walk-on. He's done a fantastic multi-part God of War retrospective. Big wrestling fan, big gamer, you love him. We're talking he's covered the entire SmackDown vs. Raw series too. Nice. He did a great job as well. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. loved having him on. 616 Entertainment, link in the description. Holy fire, when I tell you to fire. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am dad. <laughs> And that does it for this monster, girthy, weighty, deep dive on God of War 2018. How do you think that one went, sir? I absolutely enjoyed it. I love talking about this game. I love the God of War series. I love this game the most out of the God of War series. Even more than Ascension? A little bit. Oh, a li it's, it's, you know, it's close. Yeah? It's close. Okay. Not um, weak. <laughs> if there's anyone who hasn't played it, I can't stress it enough. There's so many avenues for you to go and play. You know, you can get Two. on PS4, <laughs> you can get it on PS5, <laughs> yeah. you can get it on PC. Three. Pretty much anywhere, unless you're just solely an Xbox user. Ooh, you could probably, there's probably a way to access like, like Steam. <laughs> yeah, 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 probably. But yeah, seriously, this game, uh, I know we've been reviewing a lot of great games, 
but like I don't give these out lightly. This is a ten on ten game wow. to me. Um, Wait, I'm not shocked by that. It is a ten on ten game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's pretty much a masterpiece. It's the top of its field. The only thing that I could think of is that I don't know if it'll cause eight years of people trying to rip off this game. Like with the you original, can't. Photo. it, it you costs know? too much money to rip this game off. Only the best in their field could possibly rip this game off. Maybe it will cause like a trend of more amazing storytelling and acting. Yeah, or like themes of parenting and mm. things like that, you know? Which we kind of saw with The Last of Us, which led on to this mm. anyway, so... And whatever Sony are feeding the boys who make the games for them, keep it up, lads. Uh, fucking smashed it again. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, just in terms of being pretty, there's one bit that I didn't mention. There's like a deer-faced god when you're in a cave and he kind of bumps his staff. I was like, oh man, that was cool. That's all. Just that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder if that's a throwback to the original series. There, there were like goat men with also had like staffs. I think they were called satyrs yeah. or satires. They were actually one of the hardest enemies in the game. They were fuckers. Hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. What a fucking phenomenal game. Amazing. I like put it off playing it for a while because for years. Because I knew when we play it, I want to review it and do a big dirty deep dive on it. But it felt like this is the right time to do it. And uh, yeah, Ragnarok. So hopefully it lives up to expectations and uh, maybe you'll do a deep dive for that too. Yes. Maybe? Yes. No? Yes. Sorry, guys. I tried. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So if you want to check out our other deep dives on the channel, including The Last of Us Part 2, our Lady Double D's deep dive of Resident Evil Village, jettison off to ZDR with Metroid Dread, or just watch this one again, God of War 4, God of War 2018. And leave a comment below of what you'd like us to cover in the future. A lot of people really like Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I think it's because you covered the first three Metal Gear Solids on the channel ages ago. But Steve, where can people find our video game deep dives? OSWReview.com Oh yeah, and you're feeling spicy, jaunty, chippery. Yeah, rage metery. <laughs> Teenage angsty. Mistletoey. Yeah, ooh. You can slip us a couple of bucks, watch them exclusive reviews at nuggeru.oswreview.com. And thank you so much to our patrons that keep us alive and doing the things that we do, like this bollocks of going out and doing it, they talk about stuff we love, you know, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, so, it's a goodbye from V1. Take up boo. And myself, the two and a half time golden nugger award winner. I'll never stop hot talking. Your boy, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>